lines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Another beautiful day here in the Bay Area. Take a look at our BGE home game time temperature at 73 degrees. Lots of sunshine and blue sky. BGE home, Baltimore's home team for heating, cooling, plumbing, and electrical. Why would you call anyone else? Here's the starting lineup for the Orioles brought to you by Southwest. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. Machado, Power, and Jones, Davis, Paredes, and Hardy, Scope, Rymold, Caleb Joseph behind the plate. You see the record. How about that when he has an RBI? And uh, Kendall Graveman, and, uh, you know, he'll come on. He's only 24 years old. Uh, again, he does come over the Josh Donaldson trade. Uh, obviously, Donaldson, one of the better players, along with Mike Trout, as far as the wins above replacement. So a lot of fastballs. He's one of those guys that actually has to live in the bottom of the zone. He's got a slider. He's got a changeup. You can see more hits than innings pit. And again, the right-handers do more damage, probably why Rymold's in there, nine of the 12 home runs by right-handers. Well, the Orioles get a look at another young pitcher who was on the roster originally at the beginning of the season, did not fare well, and got sent down, and now has come back up, and Bob Melvin says an entirely different pitcher than what we saw earlier in the year. Manny Machado leads it off, a couple of hits, 80 bats in the series. He enters the day sixth in runs, ninth in hits. In the American League, and obviously leading the Orioles First in those pitch. departments. Uh, see if the uh, sun has any effect trying to handle stuff hit in the air today. It's got a pretty good glare going. Not much of a breeze though. Down to third base, short hop, nice play. Danny Valencia making his first start for Oakland. Now take a look at their defense, and uh, you know, pretty porous. Cannot we? He started in right field. Burns. Uh, he is. Uh, Always in center fold can go get him. Valencia, as you mentioned, they picked him up on waivers from the the Jays. Semyon with the 29 errors. Lori, who plays third base but came up as a second baseman over at second base, Ike Davis, and then Josh Fegley also coming over from the White Sox along with uh, a number of other players. He's behind the plate. Byra batting in that number two spot, a two for five so far in the Woo! series for him. A lot of strikes thrown. If Graveman is on, he doesn't fool around with attack hitters. Again, as was true last night, try and keep him off balance as Bassett did. That one a sinker down, fouled off, right off the shin guards yeah, of Fegley. Well, yeah, pretty simple. Uh, you know, it's going to be 91. 90 is his average fastball. Change up, 84. And he's got a little bit of a slider. He came up with a cut fastball, so that gives him another pitch he can get in on the lefties. Byer is waiting at the plate on him. Pitch will be in there for a strike. See you later. Strikeout, two down. I take a look. I'm not sure if this is a cutter or a slider, but it's a, a late breaker. And Makara just gives up on it and it catches the outside corner. So Josh Fegley, one of those guys, up and down the last couple of years with the White Sox. So he has a chance to catch. Very good thrower. Adam Jones coming up. Adam with a three for nine and RBI. Uh, Graveman has pitched against the Orioles before, but only for an inning and two thirds. And that was uh, during a couple of career relief appearances when he was with Toronto. That's the only time he has faced the Orioles. Jones will take the pitch. It'll miss down low. These two teams have played a lot of day games. The Orioles are 21 and 16 in day games. They score. Uh, Almost a half a run more in the day games and night games, 4.86 to 4.11. Somewhat ironic in that the Orioles have played 37 day games, whereas the Oakland A's have played 41. Ironic because Oakland is second only to the Cubs in day games played, but the Orioles aren't far behind. Got that one to short. The man will make the play. Nice scoop made by Ag Davis and a 1 2 3 inning for the 24 year old. On the mound for the Orioles, it'll be Wei and Chen with a 4 0 mark against Oakland.
Begley. Ken has appeared in this series. Ike Davis and Semi in the shortstop. We've talked about Josh Begley behind the plate against lefties. That's why he's in. So Wei and Chen will come on and still trying to even up that uh, record. It's six and six. A lot of fastballs, curveball sliders, and then the changeup. That number coming up a little bit, maybe a little bit lower on the year than 2014. There are the numbers. ERA before the last game, which was six runs and what three plus innings against the Tigers, was 288. So that's up. And again, the home runs, 19 of them by right-handed batters, and a lot of them. Solo home runs. And the pitch will be taken down low for a ball. These A's have struggled mightily against left handers. They are 8 and 19. They have the second worst win percentage against left handers in all of Major League Baseball. The ball will be put in the air to center. Adam Jones has played shallow throughout the first two games is shallow again and an easy out on Burns. Now take a look at the uh, the defense here in Oakland and you're right about the high skies. Rymold Jones Para that's your outfield. Jones with four gold gloves. Para with a couple. Machado and Hardy gold glovers. Scope Davis and then Caleb Joseph. He of the hot bat behind the plate. Sam Fole gets started in right field and moves up from the bottom part of the order to number two. He has three hits in 15 at bats a lifetime against Wei and Chen. Manny Machado in at third base. And the pitch will be taken for a strike. Team batting average 241 for Oakland against left handers and 253 against the right handers. That'll go to first short hopped. Davis will take it to the bag and there are quickly two outs. Take a look at our Jeep inside the numbers. So the A's and Wei and Chen. That's Nick Martinez, young right hander, Santana, back with the Twins. Santiago and then Matt Kane. The Wei and the best of all of them. Of course, he loves pitching against the American League West teams, 14 and 5, low ERA, 288 in his career, actually 273, lower than that. He pitched well uh, in this ballpark where he's 2 and 0, ERA here, 2.08. And that one will be lashed foul. Lori in the number three spot. One for six in the series with an RBI. Josh Redmond has not appeared. He was in the lineup to start the ball game last night, but unable to play. Took batting practice. That back acted up again, so Reddick was taken out, and Reddick's not in here. Coco Crisp has played two games coming off the DL. He is not in. That neck acted up on him last night. May have been Bob Melvin thought from a diving catch that he made in center field. He is a fragile crisp at this point. That will go to short. J.J. Hardy's got it. Plays made and the two pitchers start out in a hurry, each with one, two, three innings. The Orioles, Davis will lead it off when we come back. Yeah, real hot. And uh, again, the, the the monster three-run home run. Of course, this is over 100 
at bats or more and then. I still marvel at the pitch he hit and how far he hit it on Monday night. He is three for ten during the three game hit streak four RBIs. A couple of home runs. Of course up there among the leaders he's eighth in homers third in RBIs in the American League. And the pitch will be taken for a strike. Davis. Paredes and Hardy. Will be due up. Orioles head on to Anaheim have a day off tomorrow three game set against the Angels who have been struggling. Davis shows bunt. he's got that third base side open with Valencia playing at the third baseman playing a shortstop position. See if Chris meant it or not. Graveman with the delivery to him and Davis will take the pitch outside for a ball. Yeah Kendall Graveman he comes out of a. Mississippi State, which is the alma mater of Buck Solwater, who manages the Orioles. A couple of A balls, double A, triple A, and then the big leagues last year at age 23. Tremendous jump. Fastball is going to be up high. He has struggled. Both he and Chen come in struggling in the last few starts. Graveman in his last four games has gone 0 and 3, and his ERA is 6.6 .6 in those games. Chen has had the same kind of struggle. That'll be outside. So Davis is on. He gets a leadoff walk, not wanting to fool around with that hot bat. Maryland Lottery contestant of the game, Jason Berlin from Catonsville, has won 500 for being selected. 500 more for every Orioles home run hit today. Play baseball box scratch offs went up to 50,000. Enter non winning tickets for a chance to be the contestant of the game. Go to mdlottery.com slash baseball. Well, there's your leadoff walk, and everybody says, "Well, you don't want to do that." That's a classic case of the obvious. It's what happens afterwards. Opens up holes. Brady shows bunt. Yeah, I don't know what that's about because, again, when you look at their defense, uh, you know Valencia's he was pretty shallow. Mm -hmm. You're a hitter. Valencia's playing in on the grass. Yeah, this yeah. is Valencia's primary position. He's played about everywhere. Swing and a miss. This may be the new look for Oakland, though, the rest of the way. If Valencia, they want his bat in the lineup, and he can play third base, and Laurie can play second base. So if Valencia can hit, he's got a chance to be in there in a number of games, and Laurie will end up at second base. And we saw him play in the outfield. So yep. he can play a lot of positions. They're struggling for runs. Radies will go after it, fouls it off outside of first base. He was shy. He was talking about it. He said, Listen, I, you know, I understand we made some trades. You know, you know, got Ben Revere, so obviously there were more people uh, in Toronto, but he liked it. And he said John Gibbons was terrific, played him. He's having a great year. So a lot of home runs and minimal of bats playing for a team that might end up in the postseason. Pitch on the way and a swing and a miss that he kept down low on Paredes. Yeah, good change up back to back change ups. You, you talked about sometimes you oversell pitches, didn't oversell that one. And again, when you get to two strikes, Jimmy Paredes becomes a guy that will swing at pretty much everything. And I think the league, league understands that. Uh, they don't have the best starting ERA if they're not well prepared. Talking about Oakland. So one away, Davis remains on at first base. J.J. Hardy a three for nine in the series will work against Graveman. Double play depth in the infield. The Orioles come into this ball game six and a half behind the Yankees. Toronto now in second place, five and a half games out. And Tampa Bay right behind the Orioles, seven and a half games out. Tampa Bay has won three in a row. So has Toronto. Yankees a couple wins in a row to hang on to first place. Hardy will take it down low. Oakland's out of it. They're playing for next year, taking a look at a number of their players. In the wild card, the Orioles now are a game out of the wild card spot as the Angels in Toronto are tied for the top position. In the wild card race, and the two of them right now would be the wild card teams. Pitch to Hardy. He got one up. He could drive, but it's foul. Ricochets into the seats of the sun drenched crowd here in Oakland. And he gets ahead of him a one ball, two strike count. Hardy with a lot of room. This outfield plays fairly deep in this very big. Ballpark with an enormous outfield. That'll go to short. Simeon, Lowry.
No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. We go to the bottom half of the second inning. We'll see four, five, six in the lineup. They have totaled 90 runs in the last 10 games that the Yankees have played. For the Blue Jays, 3-1 win yesterday over the Twins. Unusual. Toronto is 8-40 and 40 when scoring four or fewer. That is the lowest win percentage in the majors in that regard. They don't struggle with that a lot because they score no. so many runs. Yeah, how about the Yankees? Uh, what, over 12 games, they've scored about 100 runs. So 90 over 10. The other two, well, they were only getting five. Yeah. Again. The Yankees five. have used 20. I didn't know this. They're 23 levers already. Yeah. And again, they, you know, I mean, their starters are 12. So obviously losing Michael Pineda, who struck out 16 Orioles early, will affect them. They, uh, I mean, Joe Girardi has to be given a lot of credit. The managing he's done. The Yankees, I, I think, are one of the biggest surprises in Major League Baseball on the plus side. Nobody thought the Yankees were going to be that good. We'll see if they can hang on to it. But hey, it's August 5th. Way and Chen working to Butler, the DH. Big swing and a miss on a pitch down and in. Butler crosses the plate a bit in disgust with himself, I think, because he had no chance on that one. He's had big numbers against Chen, eight for 18 with two home runs. And big numbers against the Orioles in his career. Yeah, loves to hit a Camden yard. He gets on the long list of hitters that like hitting there. The other way, that's going to be a base hit. Tara will chase into the corner. Butler without speed will make a turn and go for two and he'll get there. The ball slowed down and rolled as deep as it can go. Butler's got a lead off though. Yeah, we talked about his ability when he's coming up at Kansas City. I mean, one year, 51 doubles, 47 doubles. This is how he does it. You think you make a good pitch, he just goes with it. Very much like Lou Pinella, who was, you know, a lot of people know him as a manager, but he was a 291 line hitter. He could hit it anywhere. That'll bring up Danny Valencia, the former Oriole. This is going to be his first at bat for the Oakland team, and it's going to be an RBI opportunity for him. See the numbers, I mean, really outstanding offensive numbers for Danny Valencia this season. Well, let's see if he does take a shot to right. They might even embrace him more. And the pitch by Wei and Chen is going to be in there for a strike. Yeah, if you commit yourself, I, I learned this when I was a rookie pitching against the Cardinals, and they'd come off winning the World Series. And Dick Grote, one of the great second basemen, and he could take the ball inside and turn it to right field with the best of them. The ball away is harder to do that because it's harder to keep fair. So let's see how Chen pitches. Valencia goes to short. Hardy's got it, a long throw, and he's got him. Valencia's retired, and the runner does not get moved up. 
When the Orioles come back to town on Friday, August 14, don't miss the season's next fireworks night. These A's are going to be in town for that game. Stick around afterwards. Great fireworks display presented by Baltimore Area Credit Unions. Tickets at Orioles.com or 888-848-BIRD. Wei and Chen gets one big out. Butler remains at second base. Begley was doing the catching 344 with runners in scoring position. Not a lot of chances, but 11 for 32. And we'll take the pitch inside for a ball. Dan Bellino's the home plate umpire. Chris Sagel's down at first. Laz Diaz at second. And Alfonso Marquez at third. Bellino, the home plate umpire. Generally, is going to favor the hitters a little bit. That strike zone can be kind of compact. Doesn't need it right there as he went after a pitch away. So they trade Samarza to the White Sox to get a catcher or a backup catcher. In fact, they get a shortstop and then they get last night's starter. He won his first major league game, but has pitched well in all six of them. Stocking the organization, yeah. right? Orioles infield shifted with Jonathan Scope almost behind second. Egley will take the pitch inside for a ball. He's hitting just a buck 88. Over his last 17 games, but join the crowd. That's generally true for every Oakland ball player. Their offense has been bad all year, even worse since the All Star break. But their pitching continues to be, as Jim said, outstanding. Their starters, anyway. Pitch on the waiting one will bounce. The runner's going to advance. That'll be a wild pitch, the second of the year by Chen. Yeah, a little breaking ball that uh, get up Joseph. Can't keep in front of him, and I mean that's a ball that normally he does. But I mean he he does a nothing nothing game. They couldn't get Butler over. Valencia hit a rocket, but right at the shortstop, and that gets the job done. And the infield is going to move in. Yeah, they know what come in halfway. Figuring this might be a close ball game, but Showalter, with a slow runner at third, would like to get that out if he can get it. That's going to be fouled wow. back. Big cut trying to drive it somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Good pitch to do it on. Looking fastball, got fastball. There you go. Previous five games, 2.2 runs. Of course, their starters are giving up one run or fewer in four of the last five games. Only the Chavez game where Orioles knocked them around on Monday night. Out of that pattern. Begley does not have a sacrifice fly this year. Bear in mind, he is the backup catcher, 143 at bats. Pitch to him by Chen and a swing and a foul tip held on to. Caleb Joseph able to catch that one and there is a big strikeout. You know, Wayne Chen, he did give up 10 hits in under four innings against the Tigers and he said, you know what, I, I stayed in, 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 in. They made a good job. And so he said, I'm going to try to use both sides of the plate. He read the bat. Begley had a good swing and then makes a better pitch and strikes him out. Huge strikeout. Uh, man on third, less than two outs. Canna coming up. Mark Canna. Getting the start in left field in this game. He's had an 0 for 3 in this series. And Cannon will take it for his strike. We're talking about Chen's struggle since the All Star break. His ERA is 6.6, .6, almost exactly the same as Graveman on the other side since the All Star break. Chen has 1 1, lost 2, and had 2 no decisions in his last five starts. Pitch on the way, runner off third, and that'll be outside. Leaned a little bit, kind of decided not to go after it, and it ends up being a ball. He too struggling, hitting 0 94 in the last dozen games for Mike Cannon. Chen with a chance to get out of this after the leadoff double by Butt. Lefty's delivery, got him to go after one up high. Yeah, as we mentioned last night, I mean, he had, you know, he had swings. And looked like they're pretty good swings, but he just didn't quite get to it. So I think uh, Wei and Chen, you pay attention. He likes the ball. It's the balls that he swung the best out of Wei. What's he do? Come right underneath the hands. Hard to get to that pitch with a long swing. Gana struggles against the lefties. 143 off left handers. And he got him. So Chen gets a couple of big strikeouts, a leadoff double, but Butler's left stranded at third. And it zips it.
That's what you talked about, Gary. Early on, six and four, low ERA, last three. Oh, and three, or actually the last four. I pitched well against Cleveland, but didn't get any run support. He's got out pitched. But again, looks like for a guy that as young as he is at 24 and experience wise, that's pretty good feel. Ball put up in the air, deep into center field by Jonathan Scope, and it'll hit right at the base of the wall. Gets by Sam Fold into second base, it'll be a double. So as Butler did in the second inning for the A's, Scope does for the Orioles in the third. A five game hit streak for the Orioles second baseman a lead off double. Yeah he loves to hit here he's a high ball hitter in the middle of the plate you could see 88. That's that's kind of like hitting speed especially at this level. And then he hits a bullet. He has really been hitting the ball on the button. Now the Orioles get a chance Valencia is going to play. Just off the grass at third Nolan Rymel getting the started left has not appeared in this series. Reimold will take the pitch inside for a ball. But Showalter continuing to try and keep players involved. Tough to do with the outfielders that he has. With Para coming over, is going to play just about every day. Snyder played last night for the Orioles. Reimold gets a start in this game. I mean, I mean again, I'm just a former pitcher, but you've got to take a shot to right here. You're struggling for runs. Got a guy that's red hot on deck. Get the runner to third, if not in. I mean, you can get base hits the other way. I mean, the intent has to be there. Primal, that'll be outside doing. Maybe, maybe it won't even matter. I mean, Valencia hit the ball very hard, but made no effort to get Butler to third. So Nolan Reimold head on the count here. Graveman will walk a few, 34. Given up on the year, it'll be taken. It is in there for a strike. Nolan's had only three at bats in the month of August, and he has gone 0 for 3 in those situations. On the year, 286 with runners in scoring position, good number. Again, limited chances. And a step off Graveman. No, still waiting for somebody to seize an opportunity to, to play every day. You get par to play left or right. As he is. Three and two. No Graveman comes back on him. Well, we saw last night with Chris Bassett, who again is similar in experience, uh, maybe two years older, but is that you never knew what we were going to get three and two. We got behind guys through some change-ups, great slow curve ball. Seen a curveball at 77 for Graveman. Delivery on the way, and that's going to be a base hit, and it'll get a run in. Rymold on a 3 2 will pick up the single. That'll bring home Jonathan Scope, and the Orioles are on the board with a 1 0 lead. Yeah, threw him a 3 2 breaking ball, and he went down and got it. So again, when you get to two strikes, hitting the ball to the right side is kind of out of the question. I mean, it's not a bad pitch out in front. Play coverage is important. Well, you can break your heart if you're a pitcher when a guy goes out and gets a pretty good pitch because he stayed on it. And that's exactly what Nolan Rimo did. That'll be Nolan's eighth RBI in this, the 30th game he's played in. Jonathan Scope with that double will score for the Orioles. And here's Caleb Joseph. Caleb's had a real good series, three RBIs, a couple of hits, including a home run. As he's gone two for five and continues to be highly productive as he shares time with Matt Wieters. Caleb batting ninth in the lineup. Rimold off first. That'll be down to third base. Valencia backhand. There's one. Got to hustle it over and didn't get it. Mike Davis on the scoop, but not in time to turn the double play. Bob Melvin wants to take a look at this, I think, because Ike Davis. Came up with the ball and immediately looked over to the dugout saying, I think I had him. Davis, the first baseman. Nope. Not going to challenge. So it'll yeah. be a fielder's choice. Yeah, I don't think you want to ruin or get rid of your challenge this early on that play. Now, a runner at first base. Caleb Joseph, and here's Manny Machado at the top of the order. One down. That's going to go all the way to the backstop. 
And Caleb Joseph will head down to second base, third wild pitch of the year for Graveman. Yeah, Kendall Graveman, I mean, never even got his shoulders closed, so right out of his hand, I mean, it's headed for the middle of the left handed hitter's botter's box. I mean, here's Fegley, pretty good defensive catcher, and he, he can't even get the glove on. He's sitting about two and a half feet in the other direction. Now, the scoring chance for the Orioles. The Orioles, three for 18 with runners in scoring position in the first two games. While the Orioles are third now in the American League in that department, the numbers have dipped precipitously over the uh, time since the All Star break. Graveman's delivery will be outside. Trouble finding the strike zone here in the third inning. Yeah, he doesn't quite get set. Uh, you know, it might be the fact that a little tension. Reimold can run a little bit on first. Now he's on second. But he's got to get closed to kind of get that lane, that front shoulder as your steering wheel to home plate. And Machado on a swing and a miss. Kept that one down and away, but over the plate. Manny Machado, 286 in these situations on the year. Orioles looking to add another run. Ryan Dozier, Minnesota leads the league in runs. Manny Machado is 67, ranked fifth. And he'll foul that one back into the screen. Manny, of course, has had a very consistent season right from the get go, both defensively and at the plate, starting August out four for 16 with a home run. Joseph off second base, pretty good secondary lead. Manny goes the other way, but that's where Davis was playing. Flip. Raven there to get it. Caleb Joseph moves over to third base, but there are two away for Para. Now time for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. Use O's Couch Cam, and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T-Mobile. Those of you who fell asleep the last two nights, Orioles, big bats, nine runs, 14 hits in the first game, a 9-2 victory over the A's. Then Oakland came back, a 5-0 combined shutout. Chris Babbitt, their starter, a great seven innings. Rodriguez and Abad came on to finish it up. Orioles had seven hits being shut out last night. Pyra strikeout victim his first time up. Runner on at third base he'll take that one to short. Simeon's got it. And reports him. The Orioles again a run on a couple of hits no errors and one left on base. RBI goes to Rymold for the lead. Southwest.com and by your local Mercedes dealership. Number 17. With Jim Palmer, I'm Gary Thorne. Beautiful day here in Oakland. Uh, Chris Tillman worked out before the ball game today. They hope you'll be able to start on Friday. Looked pretty good yeah. in the bullpen. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's been working real hard. I mean, you walk in the training room, he's got some kind of modality on it. He's got the foot in ice, got the foot in heat. And again, just simply rolled it. I mean, wasn't it? 
And anytime you do that, it, they all act and react differently. The Orioles haven't announced the rotation yet. Take on the Angels. Infield shifting around. Mike Davis. Chen's delivery to it will be taken for a strike. Davis generally hits up further in the order but with the left hander on the mound. He stays in and plays against them but moves down. And that'll go the other way and he's got a base hit right where the Orioles were not playing him. Rymel will chase it down in the corner and with the second consecutive inning Oakland's got a lead off double. And how did it happen. Uh, Butler went over the first base bag. This wasn't exactly over the bag but certainly the other way. Look where the target is. Look where the ball is. And again we saw Ike uh, hit a double off the wall in right center last night. So now the third hit in this series. He certainly uh, could make Bob, Bob Melvin a better manager by getting hot with the bat. Each team with a couple of hits in the ball game now. Here is Sonny in their shortstop, one for six, a home run. Three RBIs picked up in the series against Wei and Chen. And showed Bunt. He had Manny Machado moving in a bit at third. Let's see if he meant it. Simeon's got the bat, got some power. You can see that with the 10 home runs. It's the fielding they're working on, so he can be an everyday position player for them and certainly improving at short. Chen's delivery to him, that'll be foul back. Yeah, he does have some bat speed. I mean, even in triple A, and I know it's triple A, but you know, when you look at a young player, okay, he's always been a high error guy. Even if you look at, you know, A ball double A coming up, but he had 15 home runs down at Charlotte. Did play with for the White Sox for you know, a few games last year, but the, didn't strike out much in a high on base percentage, and they love that anywhere, but especially here in Oakland. Simeon waiting on it, lets the pitch go. It will be outside. Chance to get the ball game tied up with the base hit here. And he knows what you, know, you would like to do. You're down by one. You would like to hit a ball at least until you get to two strikes, take a shot to right field. I think that's why he was thinking about bunting to get the runner over. 287 on left handers. Simeon, pitch will miss inside. He's had the good bat against the lefties and the minors as well. Career numbers against left handers are good. About 40 points difference. I mean lefties and righties for Simeon, but he's going to play every day. He's 0 for 2 off Chen. Marcus Simeon waiting, pitch to him, and he's on. Yeah, and sometimes you, you know, in a one nothing game, nothing nothing game or whatever, if you're weighing Chen, you think, okay, another leadoff double. I know he's trying to hit the ball the other way. You try to make your pitches, and then you get behind. You saw the home run. You don't forget that if you're weighing Chen, and you end up walking the uh, potential go ahead run down at first. So that'll bring Billy Burns up there, rookie leadoff batter, center fielder. Burns brings the fifth best home average into the ball game, hitting 344 in this ballpark. Orioles play bunt in at first and third. Does not square, pitch the way up high for a ball. Well, let's see. Now Melvin wants to play this. Checking for the sign down at third base. Burns takes a long look. Mike Gallego, their third base coach. Davis on at second base. Simeon on at first. Not bunting or showing it, and the pitch is going to be inside. Yeah, Wayne takes a look in, but he might have hit the corner. Chen with 27 walks and 128 innings pitch this year. Good ratio with 104 strikeouts. Runners off first and second. Orioles back up at the corners. It'll be fouled back into the screen by Burns. Yeah, Billy Burns, natural right-handed hitter. And I, I, when I was, you know, he's down at the cage. We're hanging around as we do. And I said, it's okay, switch hitting. He said, 2011. He was already in the minor leagues with the Nats. I said, breaking ball. He said, no. I wanted to be closer <laughs> to first base. Good That's idea. Why he started hitting lefty because <laughs> of the speed factor. He's got that. He's got 21 infield hits. Now he shows Bunt, pulls the bat back, and the pitch is going to be taken inside. So the count 3 1 on Burns, and now see what he does here. He's looking again for the sign. See whether or not they're going to ask him to lay a bunt down or let him swing away. The Orioles infield backs up at first and third. 
Burns against lefties, 327, eighth best average in the league. And he'll take it, and they're loaded. Two walks in a row. Yeah, I think the strike zone got a little tight right there. Not that they were obvious strikes, but. So, not what you want to do. So, the base is loaded, nobody out. Sam Fole, the number two hitter, will be coming to the plate. And Caleb Joseph goes out to have a word with Wei and Chen. No big moment in the ball game. The Orioles have the early 1 0 lead, but Oakland threatening to have an inning here in the third. Well, how about the notes that you know we've seen over the first two games? The A's, when you get the bases loaded, are 30 for 90. That's 333 with five home runs and 81 RBIs. So uh, only the Yankees in these situations doing a better job of scoring. And Fold is four for nine with the bases loaded this season. You need a strikeout here, I don't think. You need an out. Orioles infield will play for two. Pitch will be in there for a strike. So you get the Lefty on lefty matchup with the bases loaded. Davis the double at third. Simeon the walk at second. Burns the walk at first. Way and Chen trying to get out of it. And the pitch will miss away. Bold this season against the lefties. One, one, one. That's his batting average. He's 110 points higher against right handers and left handers. And he's playing because of the, the Reddick back problem and Chris Neck. Yep. And that is in there for a strike. Fold didn't like that call. One and two. Yeah, so now if you're weighing Chin, you are trying to punch him out somehow. The, the big whiff it would be a big one. Pitch on the way. Fall will hit it to first base. Davis up comes home. There's one. Relay Joseph. Not in time, but they get the out at the plate. I cannot tell you how good a play that was by Chris Davis because this is a bullet. And not only does he catch it, he, 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 but let's go back and, you know, Wei and Chen, bases loaded, nobody out. But there is a strike. So now one and one. He thought it was outside. One and two. And then a bullet. And Chris Davis comes home. They're trying to get the take a look right here. Great angle right here. I mean, that's a short hop. And he is able to, to make a good throw and then full speed keeps the bases loaded. Now Laurie gets a chance. Base is still loaded one away. Laurie will take it for a strike. Laurie's gone four for eight with the bases loaded this year. One grand slam and nine RBIs with the sacks full. Grounded down his first time up. Oh, and delivery by Chen, and he gets him to go after one up and in. Good location at 91, 0 and 2. In this series, first two games, Oakland 4 for 18 with runners in scoring position. They've already gone 0 for 4 in this game. 10 for 20 lifetime. Pitch on the way to him and he'll file the ball. He must have talked to Pat Tabler. Pat's one of the broadcasters. He's one of the memorable guys that just faces loaded numbers were off the chart. He and Robin Ventura. Mr. Bases, Mr. Bases loaded in Grand Slams. Chan to the set. And that's outside. Caleb Joseph, flick of the glove for him. That's where we wanted it. Laurie's aggressive. Well, what it does, it gets him uh, out on his toes right? because it you just try to drop on the outside corner. And we know Wayne Chance, his strength is to the glove side, which is into righties. And that's looks like that's where they're going to go. Look at the target. Laurie waiting. It's inside on the fastball. Tough inning, a lot of work here, but Chen a chance to get out of it. Two ball, two strike count. Butler, the designated hitter, cleanup batter, is on deck. I would love to get that ground ball double play right here. Or he's got pretty good speed, but he can be doubled up. Pitch on the way by Chen. Laurie will foul that ball away. No play. Over by the dugout. Yeah, the grass here in Oakland is very thick. You know, climate, but the infield fast. So you're right about, yeah, even though he can fly. Get down the base path with the best of them. Good battle joint here. Seventh pitch of the at bat coming. 
Laurie has hit into five ground ball double plays. Laurie reaching, and that's that's the aggressive hitter that he is. He'll chase if he thinks yeah. he can get all of it, especially well, we, if it's up. Yeah. We got that uh, note yesterday. His dad, what a former rugby player. We play hard. We love hard. All those things. That's, that's in the notes, huh? Love life is what I'm talking about, of course. 2 2 delivery on the way to him. Ball hit in the air to left field. Should get a run in. Nolan Reimold tagging up Simeon. Throw will come to the cutoff, man. Throw back to second base. And yeah, not in time, but close. Jonathan Scope thought he had him on the cutoff throw from Manny Machado. He's looking over into the dugout saying, uh, I think we ought to take a look at this. Well, take again. First of all, right here, it is it's sensible. It's, you know, you, you know, you don't have a play, but are you going to hit the cutoff man? Yes. And when you do, there's the snap throw, and I'm telling you, it is close. Run will count either way. Lowry will get an RBI, which will tie the ball game up. The Orioles video crew taking a look here. See if they want to challenge or not. Yeah, Jonathan Scope think he's running off the field. Like he got the glove to the to the hand before it got in there. And of course, Billy Burns with his speed, he tags up and then he's going, okay, if they don't hit the cutoff man, I'm going the third and then Laurie gets his 44th RBI ball game tied at 1 1. That would be a huge break if. Again, Buck Showalter still waiting for a yes or no from his crew. This is one of the oddities of the replay. There aren't as many shots available to send to New York. Because the number of cameras being used in this game, not what you'd normally have, because Oakland's doing a simulcast of the game rather than having their own TV crew working. So you don't have as many cameras, therefore, not as many looks. And they are challenging. Bill Buck Showalter coming out as the umpires will talk to New York. And it was close. To be our first challenge of the game. Alfonso Marquez is the crew chief third base umpire. That's why he came in. Well. Yeah, usually what I think more slow motion cameras and whatever when you combine the telecast and whatever. And the Baltimore Orioles are challenging the call. But again, heads up play by the defense, best in baseball. It's just a matter of catching it and sliding the glove and Jonathan hoping to get the call didn't get it initially. So New York taking a look at what replays are available. Well Billy Burns tried to steal his 22nd base last night and what. He got after the replay got called out what about four minutes later. Mm -hmm. So far the it's pretty very consistent all year on the manager challenges. The number of calls that are overturned are at 48 percent and it stayed there almost from day one. I mean that's a significant number of calls overturned. And we'll see if this is or not. Nope he's safe. So the runner will remain at second base obviously an important call with the game tied up Oakland has runners on a first and second for Butler with two down. Has already doubled over the first base bag, and as you mentioned, what nine for 19 now against Wei and Chen. Oh, Butler will stand in two on, two down, a run in, RBI. Laurie got it. Now, Butler's opportunity. Chen's delivery on the way is in there for a strike. I always wonder. I to ask some of the guys, the Orioles players, position players, after a challenge pitcher on the mound, would you be more aggressive at the plate believing the pitcher's going to want to throw a strike after a delay like that? I don't know. Would you feel that way as a pitcher? No, I'm, I'm trying to get Billy Butler out and I don't know how I'm going to do that. I, you know, other than you know he's a pretty good hitter and he hits it all over the place, but I think if it, I mean, it depends if it loaded him up and you were struggling with the command. I mean, how often do we ever see Wei and Chen walk two batters in an inning? Yeah. 
just doesn't happen you know, except today and here in Oakland. And the pitch will be outside to Butler. Burns on it second. Great speed. Same at first. Fold. Not as fast as Burns, but he's fast. So base hit here with two down. They'll be flying. The Oriole outfield is shallow, even against Butler. Especially Jones in center and Para in right. Pitch on the way by Chen. Butler will take that one outside. So he's shown patience in his at bats. Three and one Valencia on deck. Well, we've seen like four three and one counts with Wei and Chen pitching, and that is very unlike Wei. I mean, early on uh, that Boston game, that Monday morning game, horrible weather, he walked five. The only other time more than two. Runners go, swing and a miss. And Joseph able to come up with the ball. Well, that's what speed allows you to do. Heads up. Play by Bob Melvin sending him. He's got a guy with speed, Billy Burns. That's steal number 22. It's a double steal. Yeah. And again, your lead runner, you know, you time him, you look back, you look back. If you don't alter it, then you have heads up base runners, and they do. Burns gets his 22nd stolen base. He is second in the league in stolen bases. And Sam Fole gets his eighth. Now you got two in scoring position. And a three ball, two strike count on Butler. And he'll take it and another walk. And they're loaded again. Three free passes in the third inning will bring Dave Wallace to the mound. Well, you talked about maybe uh, Dan Bellino not as ample as strikes on as other umpires. And Wayne thought he might have gotten the top part of the strike zone. Didn't get the call. So we'll have a sack. Sacks full situation again for Danny Valencia. So Wei and Chen comes in. I mean, you know, four and zero lifetime, one sixty nine ERA here, two and zero with right around two runs a game, two oh eight. And that's why they take away all those numbers. Kind of like going to a restaurant. You're only as good as that night's service meal. Valencia's first ball game for the A's has had a couple of chances already. Valencia came up with a runner at second in the second inning and grounded out. Now he's coming up with the bases loaded and two down, hitting 316 off lefties. And he'll take the pitch inside for a ball. He was claimed off waivers from Toronto on Monday. And the former Oriole gets a chance to do some damage to his former team and a number of former teammates. Well they got him. The Orioles got him uh, because he could hit lefties. Yeah. Again his seven home runs five of them against right handers. And Boy Chen is just struggling with that strike zone. I mean those aren't close to an old. And then what happens Gary and I've been out there where you lose your release point. Now you you want to throw a strike but you want it to be a quality pipe strike and you don't know if you can really do it because you just haven't. I mean, it wasn't wild to this inning. And all of a sudden, sometimes you lose it. Base is loaded. Valencia takes it. That'll be in there for a strike to him. You know, it's an interesting thing. I, I've talked when we did the interview with Tyler Wilson, who pitched for the Orioles, and you know, pitched very well. Got you know, bet, certainly the uh, benefit of nine runs. But he talked about how the ball was slicker here. You're used to pitching in humidity. You come out to the West Coast, ball a little bit slicker, less humidity. Delivery to Valencia, and that'll be fouled off. No play. It'll take a hop. And if you're, you know, if you, if you pitch for five, six, seven, eight, ten years, you feel okay. Maybe I got to throw a few more two-seam fastballs. He is a four-seam fastball pitcher, so it's a little bit harder for him to make that adjustment. Valencia with the Orioles, 2013, had 161 at bats. He hit 304, eight home runs, 23 RBIs with the Orioles. Base is loaded. Delivery on the way. Valencia takes it inside. Again, a fastball at 91, but a little bit off the plate. So now, middle of the plate. Hope it doesn't go there. Usually doesn't. This is what we're seeing. A lot of fastballs, but 3 2, everything changes. Those numbers go out the window, and you've got to figure out what can I throw that is going to make Andy Valencia swing the bat. Game tied at one. Base is loaded, two down. Chen's delivery runners go and he got him a high strike call. So Wei In Chen gets out of the inning.
After the bases were loaded with nobody out, he surrenders only one run. Ball game ties. They'd like to run it to uh, 12 and 4. Third game of a series, they're what, 20 and 15, 18 series wins, 13, and then four that they split. They'd like to run that to 19. It would be nice to come on this nine day, 10 day road, nine game, 10 day road trip in, in three series. Certainly would. I don't know. If that's all you can take care of. I mean, while the other teams will be doing what they're going to be doing. A great job by Chen to get out of a very dangerous inning to give up only that one run in the third. Pretty amazing. Here's Adam Jones. Jones will go after it. That'll be to short. Simeon's got it. So let's see your arm. One hopper. Got it. Nice play. Well, when he was talking down by the cage today, he said, you know, I just lost my release point. We talked about Chen doing it. It happens. So again, do you get your feet set? And this is about the balance. And then again, if you played the national lead or you played on dirt, perfect throw. The other thing he said, and I mean, this is what the A's or any coach manager wants to hear. He said, I am willing every day to work to get better. And he is. Yeah. Ron Washington, the extra coach, is making sure of that. <laughs> he had him out there today well, what uh, do you for think, this day game. You know, Mike Bordick was as good as he was because of, of, of the work ethic that he had. I don't know if too many guys are you know, good at anything they do. Well, people, if you don't work hard. Hmm. What a thought. Well, but it's true. You know, you, I know. You talk to coaches and go, hey, why is this guy struggling? Well, doesn't want to put the work in. I've seen a lot of talented people who have gone by the wayside, not willing to work at it. That'll be taken inside, almost catching it. Chris Davis drew a walk his first time up, ended up on the front end of a double play. Ball game tied at one apiece. As both of these ball clubs looking to get a series win under their belt here today. Pitch on the way. Graveman's delivery. Throttle back on that one at 82 and had him out in front of it. Good pitch. One ball, two strike count. A win, three losses, one no decision. Graveman in his last five outings, six and seven record on the year. Davis will take the fastball down low. Well, he came in 157 outs. On the ground, 75 in the air. You like that ratio? This ballpark made for fly ball pitchers, and that one will just miss. So he works the count full: three balls and two strikes on Chris Davis. Laurie, second baseman, way out there in right field on the shift against him. Chris will go the other way, foul. This has been a tradition to have a day game on Wednesdays here in Oakland for a long, long time. But Showalter was absolutely delighted with it as we talked with him in the clubhouse before the ball game today. 
And it's funny, oh, is it? He was funny. Day game. Why? Why are we playing a day game on a Wednesday? Why are we doing that? Got him. Chris thought he had a walk on that. Instead, it's the third strikeout for Graven. Yeah, he kind of shrugged his shoulders and had already flipped the bat away. Well, somewhere around the outside corner, Dan Bellino's the the judge and jury. So two down. Yeah, you think that. And here's Jimmy Paredes. Paredes back in the DH role. He twos had a start in the outfield and right field here in this series. He rips it foul. Paredes one hit, eight at bats against Oakland. Oakland team that will be coming to Baltimore for a four-game set. The Oriole fans will get a chance to see this team at Camden Yards. They'll be playing uh, uh, on a Friday through Monday, August 14, when the Orioles return back home. Well, oh, check out that schedule. Night game on that Monday, and then they play here mm -hmm. the next night against the Dodgers with an afternoon game right after that. And on Bob Melvin's little chart, guess who's pitching after they fly all the way across the country? Clayton. <laughs> there is the third out as Davis makes the play. Brady's retired another one, two, three inning, one, one. And Oriole fans hoping the O's can pull out this game three of the side a good one as Chen has worked his way around a couple of problems. That's not Jim Palmer down there. He's up here actually. But the right number anyway. Chen's delivery will be a bouncer. Catcher. Fegley leading it off strikeout victim his first time up Josh Fegley. 27 years old out of Indianapolis White Sox the last two years combined 207. Batting average. He never hit a lot of home runs, but you, again, you look, you look okay. If you're going to be a catcher, can you receive the ball? How well do you think? Can you throw? He does all those things. And high on base percentage coming through the minor leagues. Never a lot of power numbers. And Fegley will take that one up high. 62 pitches have been thrown by Wei and Chen, as you see, and he's had a lot of these counts with the three on the front end. Yeah, they don't score him when he pitches, what, five, three point five, three runs per start. And he surrendered his fourth walk. And it is a leadoff walk. 
Oh, we'll see if the A's can do anything with this one. On Saturday, August 15, the first 20,000 fans, 15 and over, get the J.J. Hardy orange replica jersey. Birds will be taking on the A's. You can add the award rub. This the O's popular alternate jersey. Tickets at Orioles.com or 888-848-BIRD. 66% uh, percent of leadoff batters retired this year by Chen. A little low. He's usually up at 70. Not hurting, uh, not helping his numbers in this game. The last three innings, leadoff man has been on. Canna takes it for a strike. He was a strikeout victim his first time up. Again, looking for the ground ball, try and turn the double play. Yeah, Wei and Chen just ran the ball underneath his fist and keyed him. Short lead at first base. Begley not a base stealer. Off speed delivery misses. A's come in eighth and average, eleventh and runs. They are next to last in home runs, have only 85. Middle of the pack in walks, and they're on base percentage ninth. Chen with a look over. Canada goes after it. He'll foul it back and out of play. Yeah, you're you're slumping. You're young. You want to do well. Shaking his head, going, "I just chased one over my head." Instead of two and one, it's one and two. Now, Wayans hoping he can make a pitch like he did the last time. Three hits in his last 33 at bats. Mark Cano. Pitch on the way to him, and that one too off the fists is going to be foul back. It just amazes. We sit up here, and we, you know, we always talk about shifts, but there is so much room. In the right field. And it, it, if you, and it's harder to do with two strikes, but if you can just, and the hitters can do this, stay inside the ball. It's a gold mine out there. The guys just don't do it, which is why they can put the shifts on. Pitch on the way to him will be inside and bounced. So count up, not chasing on that one, and works the count to two balls and two strikes. We are tied at 1 1 fourth inning. Each team a run on two hits. Orioles have left only one on base, while the A's have left four, three of those in scoring position. The base is loaded last inning. Jen's delivery, and that ball goes down the line in right field. Power going over. Power diving. Can't get it. And the ball will roll into the corner. Begley on his way to third. He'll be stopped. It'll be a double. Begley had to wait to see if Pyro was going to make that catch, so he'll be at third base on the two baggers. Well, he almost caught it. Went an awful long way. You know, a lot of times this, this is one of the worst sun fields along with San Francisco. So we've seen what now three doubles sliced the opposite way. You could see what maybe two, three inches. And that's what you're talking about right there. Begley not knowing whether it's going to be caught, didn't want to get doubled up, as it turns out. Once again, some runners on base, nobody out. So Chen doing it the hard way so far in this game. The A's are 0 for 5 with runners in scoring position. Again, the infield is going to be drawn in. Mike Davis had a double his first time up, and again, nobody out. And Davis to first, and another fine play by Chris Davis on the short hop and one away. Yeah, Ike Davis hit it with one hand, but hit it hard. So we've seen fall with the bases loaded, hit a screamer down there that Chris Davis picked. And here in the fourth inning, I mean, he can go out. I mean, he gets him out on a breaking ball. It's hit sharply. And again, it's not an easy play because it's a short up. So we talk about underrated defensively at first base. You're looking at him right there, Chris Davis. This has been a problem for the A's all year looking for that one big hit that can open a game up and there it is. It goes to left field. Sonny and that'll score. Begley, Canna, second base, double, two RBIs and Oakland on top. Well fourth double here and we're already in the four inning. So last night, the three run home run on the hanging slider right here. Well, maybe it's a change up, gets it up in the zone, very much like the double single that Nolan Reimold hit to drive in the Oriole run. And once again, Dave Wallace coming out to talk to Wei and Chen. 
So Boy. Simeon moving down to that nine spot productive today a walk scored two RBIs on a double. Well we all know it, it, and Brad Brock it's his turn to uh, to pitch I thought at least hopefully it was going to be later in the ball game but what the A's went one for seven on Monday night with runners in scoring position Orioles put nine on the board so that doesn't work out well three for 11 last night but Simeon's what the double today and the three run home run put that game out of touch last night. And the A's a chance to do more. Top of the order. Burns up. He has walked and flied out. Simeon's on at second base. Simeon now with 28 RBIs on the year. And that will be foul back. Orioles first and third creeping in a little bit just to take that bunt away. 27 infield hits ranking second in the majors. In infield hits, Gordon with Miami's got 33 and on could, the year. And you can see Buck Showalter up because Simeon got a big lead, and uh, you know he's already stolen nine bases. You've already seen a steal of a third and second. That's going to be fouled yeah. close. Well, you talk, you know, it's such a huge park, and, and that hasn't changed since I was pitching. And you talk to Darren Bush, who's come on as a hitting instructor, and I said I can just imagine what your philosophy is. Meet, we use the middle. Use the middle of the field. He goes, yeah. Put the ball in play. Yeah. And that's exactly what Scott Kulba. Now, of course, if your approach is that way, then you can have some success. So four doubles, three to the opposite field today. For Billy the Burns, game. runner goes, throw down Joseph, not in time, stolen base. Yeah, if you're going to fall asleep, then that's the second time. I mean, you could see it coming. It's just the lead. You have somebody with speed. This is a tenth stolen base, hard throw because the right-handed batter. Everything is in your favor if you don't pay attention. Ten out of 14 for Simeon. That'll force the infield to coming in again, so that changes the whole complexion of the inning and gives Burns a lot of opportunities to get an RBI. Chen's delivery and that'll be taken outside. Way and Chen's just struggling. Yeah. I mean, and, this and, is not a good day. And how did the whole Inning start. Another walk. Four walks, most since all the way back in April in Boston. Miserable weather. This is about as perfect as it can get weather wise. Two of the walks have scored in the game. 3 1 lead for the A's. 2 2 delivery and a chopper that'll go off Caleb Joseph. Way and Chen coming off the Detroit game where he gave up six runs, 10 hits, and three and a third. That was the shortest start. This season for him, and uh, five and a third the game before that, and this one he's giving up hits and runs, and a two-ball two-strike count here in the fourth inning on Burns at third base. Obviously, sending him with that real good speed, probably not going to go on contact. We'll see if it happens. And, and what is Billy Burns trying to do? Put a ball in play. What his hitting instructor talked about. Jen's trying to strike him out. He's trying to make contact. And if you do that with the infield in, because they're in, that enhances your chance of getting a hit. He doesn't have to get a base hit. Fly ball of any depth. And the speed factor at third plays into that. Billy Burns waiting on it and a swing and a miss as he dropped that one in on him and another. Big strikeout. If anything has saved Chen, it's been strikeouts at most opportune moments. Well, he doesn't give in. And, you know, that's just a breaking ball. It stays up. Billy Burns probably looking fastball. He gets it in just enough to get the strikeout. 50th strikeout of the year for Billy Burns. So Burns out of there. Runner at third. Infield can back up with two down. Sam Fole coming up. Get into a fielder's choice is grounded out. Shows bunt. Uh oh, they got him. It was a squeeze and he's out. And there's a break for the Orioles. Wow. Squaring around that time was fold and it looked like it was a suicide. At least that's what Simeon thought as he took off for the plate. Caleb Joseph dead to right on this one. No problem. A good throw and a tag put on. A couple of runs in and the A's go on top.
Mike Hessman, congratulations. Minor league home run record 433. And the Cubs push to the playoffs has begun. As the Cubs have moved into a wild card spot with the Pittsburgh Pirates in the National League, the Giants a half game out. Hey, I think their push started when they signed Lester and got Joe Madden to manage. Didn't hurt. No. Strike on the outside corner. Now the Orioles let to come from behind. Hardy get into a double play his first time up. Great story on Mike Hassman who uh, set the new mark for home runs. Pitch taken down low. He'd been a teammate of Chipper Jones, both in the minors and at the major league level. And Chipper sent him an immediate text after he got that home run. He said, Congrats to my old minor and major league teammate, Mike Hessman, for blasting his 433rd home right tonight with the Toledo Mud Hens. That'll go to short. Senian's got it. And off the bag, tag will be put on gently because, after all, it is a day game. Our PMC minor league report. Now Junior Lake and the Orioles uh, trade Tommy Hunter for him and now you hope he has good numbers because Tommy Hunter was the integral part of this bullpen so he's gone Junior Lake I don't know if he'll play at this level this year. He's got major league experience and Tommy now the closer for those Cubs. Well he has closed he, I don't know if he's the official closer yet but certainly capable. There's people that are Royal fans at the beginning of 2014 he was a close mm -hmm. he got a lot of saves he just didn't do it as efficiently as Zach Britton ended up doing <laughs> oh that did not sound good no. Jonathan scope well six for nine in this series and I, I, I you know you want to move his feet but you don't want to drill him and that's what he did fifth hit batter by Graveman this year yeah, that's almost like I don't know. You know, guy's hot. I mean, that's just you throw it at his kneecaps. It's a way of uh, hitting people without people think it's intentional, even though you know what the the Boy. result will be, and you also know what the intent is in the sense that you're trying to move him off the plate as hot as he's been. You just hope that he got a non bony part of the knee. Flexing it pretty well. That's yeah. one good sign. And putting some weight on it. That's another. Yeah, just a two seamer at the kneecap. And you know, Ooh. I'm saying he's trying to do it. That's gonna hurt tonight if it yeah. doesn't hurt now, and it does. Ooh, man. You know, the good news is he appears to at least be somewhat all right, and you, you need base runners, and you just got one. No, he'll, looks like he's going to stay in the ball game. We'll see how that impacts whether he stays for the game in its entirety or not. Ryan Flaherty, of course, back up for the Orioles in all of the infield positions, and I do mean all of them. But scope is in. Rymold a base hit, RBI in the third inning. Leadoff double by Jonathan Scope, and Rymold drove him home for the Oriole run. So the Orioles get a man on one down. Brian Mold and then Joseph do up against Graveman, the 24 year old. And the pitch will miss away for a ball. Both pitches are working from behind on hitters in large part today. Graveman with a walk and three strikeouts. Chen's got four of each. 2 0 delivery on the way to him, and that's going to skip across the plate for a ball. 3 0. Yeah, maybe a little bit more license for Graveman because he's a ground ball pitcher. In fact, I'm not sure, other than the scope double, almost every ball has been on the ground today. Taking all the way, and the strike on the outside corner. Now, Rymel will move the bat. Very efficient pitch count for Kendall Grid. Rymold last played against Detroit on the second. He'll lift that one in the air to center. He hit it hard, but it's a big pasture. Burns goes back. He's got it. And going back to first base will be Jonathan Scope, two down. 
On Sunday, August 16, the Orioles take on these A's. The first 7,500 fans, 14 and under, are going to get the Chris Tillman growth poster. It's presented by Tops. See how your child measures up to the 6'5 hurler. Life size poster, perfect for the young fans. Tickets at Orioles.com or 888 848 Bird. Chris hoping to make the start on Friday. Yeah, he grew up about, what, 10 minutes from Anaheim Stadium? Or Fountain Valley. Strike taken on the outside corner. Caleb Joseph, fielder's choice. His first time up. Still a runner at first base. Scope. Hit on the knee by that pitch. And that's going to be in the outside corner for a strike as well. Two pitches down low, outside part of the plate. Well, his power is inside middle. And he was able to get pitches in that area over the last 10 days and drive it. All right, two down. They're holding the bag at first on Skill. Now way outside, he'll get out of second base. The runners are advancing <laughs> precipitously here in this ball game. Well, once again, Kendall Graveman just doesn't quite get loaded. You want to stay over the rubber, but he just goes left. Head goes that way, shoulder goes that way, and then Josh Fegley once again going not even close to where I'm sitting. Second wild pitch. By Graveman in the game, and so Joseph will get the RBI chance. And if you're catching Kendall Graveman, you got that ball that keeps running into the righties, and then you get the dive bombing ones to the left. So stay alert. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Stay loose. It's not as simple as getting your. I mean, when a when a pitcher misses his target by three feet, it's hard to get the body in front of that one. And uh, Chopper Simeon's going to have to make a good play on this one. Double clutch. Still got him. So Joseph is retired. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one left on base. Rubber match, 3 1 open. Mazda dealers. Pretty good crowd here at the ballpark as you take a look across the bay, San Francisco. We are in Oakland, and the A's have the three to one lead. Jonathan Scope, after getting hit on the knee, back out there, a little limp. That'll only get worse probably as the day goes along. Yeah, they'll get some ice on it once this game is finished. And Chen look for a quick inning here. Fold, Lori, Butler. Fold the fielder's choice and he's grounded out. Somebody missed a sign. He was at the plate, squared around. Looked like a suicide because Semia took off from third base and got thrown out. Trying to get back. Pops that one back and out of play. Fold gets another chance at it here in the fifth inning. Simeon thought it was a suicide squeeze. 
Uh oh. No problem there in the following throw. Chopper towards second. He went. Oh, he can't run. Wow. Full trying to get out of the batter's well, box. Almost, almost, almost fell third. down. Yeah, almost fell. Ended up stumbling towards third, back towards the mound. Yeah. Well, once you make a funny swing, so right here, I mean, it looks like that. It's probably the left hamstring, or knee, whatever goes down, and then mm. tough game. See if Fold can stay in. Laurie up, sack fly, RBI, and he is grounded out, striking the outside corner to him. Three, four, and zero oh for the A's. One, two, and zero oh for the Orioles. Chen's delivery to him outside part of the plate and hit that way foul. Yeah, Wayne is trying to figure how to get out of the fifth inning. Pitch count at 84. Have a somewhat easy inning in a sense. Just keep the pitch down and then hope his Orioles will have some sustained offense problem they've had since Monday night. I could see it with Chris Bassett because he was out. I mean, he just dominated last night. But Graveman all over the place. Bassett getting the shutout, 14th for the A's. Got a cover. Chen got a late break and gets there in time for the out. Davis playing a very strong first base in this ball game. Yeah, and then makes the perfect throw. So, you know, he gets to it. It's a high chopper, so it's got a lot of top spin. And it makes a nice route. You can see him go back just a step. And then, you know, sometimes when you do get that late break, you have to take a direct line. So it's very important. First base and gets the ball to you, you know, where you can catch it and find the bag. And Two down, nobody on. He retired the side in order in the first inning. A run in the. Third and the RBI by Laurie on the sack fly, and then two in the fourth inning. Two RBI double by Simeon. Now looking for a one, two, three here in the fifth. Butler has doubled and walked. Nine for 19, two home runs off Chen. Breaking ball will miss against the Orioles. Ten homers and a 307 average. For the Oakland A's DH. 57th game. He's played against the Orioles down to third. Manny Machado's right there. Picks it up, makes the throw, and will record the out. So it is a 1 2 3 inning, even if it had a precarious final out. Here are our Mazda do ups Machado, Power Jones, with the Orioles down a couple. Only the fifth ever to do it. Armin Killaboo, Frank Thomas, Barry Bonds, and Chase Utley are the others. What is going on with Chris Sale? Look at the ERA in the first half. Look at the numbers in four starts since the All Star break. And for Sean Tollison, all of a sudden a closer supreme. 20 saves, 76 days. 
He did not have a save prior to taking over that role. Yeah, good stuff. We saw him. When they came to Baltimore. Yeah, throws hard, has a change up to go with it. That'll go to left field. Manny Machado. One pitch in and out. Canna comes over to get it. Yeah, the wind, uh, well, let's see. It's it, it the wind to right is blowing to right, and the wind to left is blowing to left. So I don't know how they figured that out. It's been kind of blown out the last couple of days, and well, that's left field. Hmm. And then right field is going the other way. So I guess it's swirling. That ball, I bet Manny just put his head down because he knew that was an out. Did it pretty well. It went nowhere. As the heavy dippy weatherman used to say, "There's a low front coming in on the right, and a low front coming in on the left, resulting in a high flood of wind going out to the right and left." There you go. Convergence. That's the heavy dippy weatherman. Got to be old to remember that there was such a thing. His name. His name was Carlin. George Carlin. George Carlin. That's really? how he started. That was his routine. Know. Was the hippy dippy weatherman. <laughs> And it was funny. And of course, we're going to Southern California. We got what, Johnny Carson do the, uh, <laughs> the whole thing and take the Slauson cutoff and the whole thing he used to do. Probably doesn't even exist anymore. The Slauson, oh, yeah. the Slauson, cut Slauson exit's still there. Well, no, I bet the cutoff. Well, I don't that know. Is, the cutoff. is that what he was talking <laughs> That's about? That's what he was talking about. <laughs> Get on the 105 to the 205 to the 303. Let's help the express way. Get the Slauson yeah, cutoff. That's right. And you want to avoid the 405 it. because it's <laughs> backed up for 68 miles. <laughs> In San Diego, take a helicopter. Exactly. Here is Para budding. Pushed it. Valencia. No. Para gets the infield hit on a well placed bunt. Well, you're trying to get on, and you're only down by two. And, you know, his first swing in an Oriole uniform was a double down the right field line, and then hits have been. A little bit hard to come by. I mean, he came in uh, when the Orioles traded for him, hitting 438 the month of July. So smart play. And that gets the potential tying run to the plate. Adam Jones. Okay. Jones was grounded out twice to short. Last time, real good play to deny him a base hit by Simeon, the shortstop. Orioles pick up base hit number three off Graveman. White Sox Tampa Bay in extra innings. White Sox had a 5 0 lead. Tampa Bay tied it. And they're playing in the 10th. Next opponent for the Orioles, the Angels. They're playing today as well. They are at home against Cleveland. Sixth inning. Cleveland has a 2 to 1 lead over the Angels. Adam Jones, chance to do some damage here against Graveman in the sixth inning. Mm. Pretty good throw. Yeah, pretty quick. Move over there. And the one thing you used to be able to spin. Now you have to actually make a discernible step. Rules they implemented to keep you as a pitcher from deceiving the runner. Fire's got a real good lead. Not running. Jones will follow back. Against Graveman, uh, bases have been stolen five out of ten against him this season in his 17 starts prior. The A's eight wins nine losses in those ball games. The Orioles in Chen's starts 12 and 8. One ball one strike count. Are leaning not going Jones will take the pitch and it'll miss outside. Oh Adam trying to help out the Oriole cause right here here in this ballpark a 289 hitter Adam has had a couple of home runs. Here at the Oakland Coliseum. Lifetime eight long balls against Oakland. It's even closer. Well, you cannot, and I mean emphatically, get picked off two runs down. Just no reason to do that. You don't steal a lot of bases. The early, you know, far early in his career, stole 20 when he was playing for Arizona. Just get a good secondary lead. Mm. You've got a tie game at home plate with a potential go ahead run on deck. So don't get yourself thrown out. Nine out of 12 with the Brewers for Para. Has not attempted with the Orioles. Has not shortened the lead. Pitch to Jones in the air, center field. It is deep. Burns back of the wall. Up and he caught it. Great catch. Billy Burns may have robbed him of a home run. 
400 feet away. Yeah, you got to bell it to get it out. They almost think that Chris Davis is hitting because that's happened to him three times. So here's your potential tie run a towering drive. And Billy Beans, Billy Burns has speed. Yeah, I'm not sure it would have gotten over the wall, but certainly off the top of it. And Raven applauding that. Why wouldn't you? So there's the defensive play of the game so far. Second out of the inning, Billy Burns tracked it down. And Para goes back to first base now with two away. Chris Davis a walk and he has struck out. Shift on. And he'll take the pitch outside for a ball. So little help for their pitchers. The ball club that's committed the most errors, given up second most unearned runs. There's some real defensive help by Billy Burns in center. And he's now that's where playing deep helps. Yeah. I mean, he plays very deep. You don't get back on that ball probably if you play where Adam Jones plays in center. Davis on the big cut. But he's way out there. So it gave him a great chance to get that ball lined up yeah, and, and to get to the yeah, wall. And he's also protecting a two run lead. So you probably play a step or two and then Adam. Home run guy with 17 of them. Gonna play a step, maybe a step deeper anyway. Fire up on first base. Fourth throw made with Parr diving back in on each occasion. Orioles, of course, relying on the home run as they have in the Showalter era. Not that they hadn't before. But 44% of the runs off homers. Pitch on the way. Raven got it in. That's into the shift, and it's a base hit. Making the turn is Para. He'll head to third, played in by Fold. So Davis keeps it going with two down. Runners at first and third. Chris gets his first hit of the game. Now has a four game hit streak. Get in on the baseball action with Masson. Text the word Orioles to 29292 for team alerts and chances to win exclusive prizes all season long, including meet and greets with your favorite players. That's Orioles. 29292 for O's alerts. You can't miss. Jimmy Paredes. Well, ideal situation. Third time up. You got the first base hole. You've seen the movement. You've seen the fact that you know, he's trying to throw you change ups, get you out in front. Paredes, their best with runners in scoring position for the Orioles. Paredes is going to do it again. Base hit into center field. And that'll get an RBI. Para will score. Down to second base goes Davis, and the Orioles make it a one run ball game. Yeah, this is when Cleveland got to Graven uh, in the uh, sixth inning. And, uh, of course, he pitched pretty well, just didn't get a lot of run support. And so there you go. Fastball out over the plate. Just go get it. Look for your pitch. And he's able to do that and make it 3 2. Kurt Young coming out to have a conversation with Kendall Graven. Brady's 350 with runners in scoring position strong on it all year long. He is 10th in the league with that number. So the Orioles, even with two down after that takeaway by Burns in center, have been able to put a run across. There you see the differential we were talking about. Yeah, and they were, they were so good. I mean, really going into the end of uh, June, they were about 318. So you can see first 53 games, the last 58, three, three games. Still above the league average, but not where they used to be. And on the roller coaster ride they've been on with runs, those RBIs have mattered. Bullpen action, Francisco Rodriguez. Orioles also going to get folks moving around down there. J.J. Hardy first and second base. Pitch in the dirt and stopped with the glove. Begley makes the save. Now we've already had two wild pitches. That was almost the third. So Hardy who was hit into a double play and grounded out. Chance to get Davis in from second. Maybe Paredes from first. 3-2 lead. Orioles now out hitting the A's 5-4. Three of those hits this inning here in the sixth. Hardy will take them. <laughs> Orioles up and down offense last nine games two runs seven runs two runs eight runs eight runs six runs one run nine runs no runs. 
Not a lot of uh, evenness <laughs> in those numbers. Pitch outside for a ball. As long as it's enough to win, it doesn't matter, well, but it right. hasn't been. Exactly. Orioles two games above 500 at the moment. They don't see a lot of bases, so it's about the home run. It's about the clutch hitting. When they get it, as most clubs are pretty good. DJ Hardy waiting on it, and he's going to get a base hit. That'll roll into the gap, tie the ball game up. Davis will come in to score. And the Orioles, with two outs, RBIs, have knotted this game up at three. And how did it all start? Para. With a nice little bunt. Got on, kind of sets the inning up. You get the big guys. Of course, Tim Jones almost homers. It's a mat matter of getting good pitches, and Bob Melvin has seen enough. So he's going to come out and get the, the youngster, Kendall Graven, here in the sixth. So the Orioles get where they want to go, and that's into that bullpen of the A's. They have runners on at first and third here in the sixth inning. Two runs in to tie the ball game up at three. AT&T call to the bullpen. AT&T proud partner of the Baltimore Orioles. AT&T mobilizing your world. So Fernando Rodriguez comes on second night in a row. First uh, time the Orioles ever saw him was last night. Fastball curveball, and then a occasional changeup. 93-94. Uh, over his last six games, four runs, and over his last 22 games, the numbers are a lot better. And again, low batting averages. And then the, the, the opposition has yet to hit a home run. So the Orioles with a chance to take the lead. As J.J. Hardy's tied it up with a base hit. Now Jonathan Scope gets the opportunity. Scope hit on the knee his last time up, had a double and scored on a Rymold single in the third inning. First and third, two down. Rodriguez looking for the final out. Right handers delivery will be in the dirt. Boy, it's been a busy day for Fegley behind the plate. He's had a lot of chances to practice, only this isn't practice. Blocking baseballs. They've been all over the place. Good numbers, only two have scored. Rodriguez called up from Triple A Nashville early May. Ten relief appearances with the sounds. Runners off first and third. Foul back into the screen. So Rodriguez. Jim was talking about those low averages. 135 left handers, 225 right handers. He hasn't given up a home run. 33 innings pitched. Ball game tied. Orioles looking for their lead here. Swung on and still can't catch up to that one. 
Yeah, he's got a good curveball. I mean, it's a downer. And, you know, it throws hard enough, so he's got one going up and one going down. And Brady's on at third base, Hardy on at first. It's on the way to scope and another swing and a miss and a tag put on new. Hang on, foul ball. Yeah, he said he fouled it off, and that's all that matters. Dan Bellino, and here comes Bob Melvin, manager for the DAs. Catcher vaguely thought that ball had been missed. And you could see Jonathan Scope trying to foul it off. And when he goes to tag him is when he runs. So he's not going to run until right there. So maybe he. And of course, Fernando thinks pretty good curveball right there. And then nice job by Fegley to keep it in front of him. And Didn't ask for any help on that. Made the call at home plate. Dan Bellino. And it will stay that way. Runners on at first and third. Fegley goes out to talk to Rodriguez. Make sure he stays focused here. Still got to get the out. At least try to against Jonathan Scope. Jonathan now with a five game hit streak, picking up a hit in his first at bat in the ball game during the streak. He's nine for 16. First and third for the Orioles. Rodriguez, that'll go down the line, foul to the Oriole bullpen. Yeah, show him the fastball in and then most likely because he's hit so many fastballs. I mean, six for nine in a series. If you get the ball up in the zone, he's putting a lot of good swings at it. The only thing you got to worry about it, will he bounce the curveball? One two count. He did, yeah. and good block by Fegley, holding the runner at third base. Brady's getting a good secondary lead there, but nowhere to go on that one. Yeah, he's got one of those Tom Needenfure curveballs. Really. Tom, big guy. It's on top of it. It's it's 12 to six. Delivery on the way. Scope will take it. Another one down in the dirt, and another one Fegley's able to get. So a full count, three balls and two strikes on Scope. Battling, trying to keep it alive, get the Orioles lead, and get Rymel to the plate here in the inning. Tough at bat. This batter faced by Rodriguez on a relief. The third team started with the Angels, went to Houston, Tommy John 2013. And another one back into the screen. Yeah, hard to do much with up and in at 94. But Jonathan, young hitter, doesn't want to get called out, so he's just trying to put it in play. Orioles three for six in these situations in the ball game, picking up the two RBIs with two down here in the sixth inning. Tie the ball game up. Rodriguez again. Scope goes up high. So Rodriguez will win that battle as he gets the strikeout, but the Orioles win the inning. They get a couple of runs, RBIs, Rymold, and the one by Hardy gave the Orioles the lead.
more walks since early April uh, up in Boston. So he made a lot of big pitches, got himself out of trouble. He did give up three runs, and again, the uh, the pitching, I mean, if you check out the four walks, extraordinarily high for him. A lot of strikes, but just lost his field. And now it's time for a little relief for your car, too. Visit Jiffy Lube for regular oil changes and help prevent damage and wear to your engine. Jiffy Lube, drive in today. 11-game scoreless streak for Brad Brock. A lot of fastballs and 93 to 95 breaking balls, hard slider, and then the power changeup. Very effective. Bottom half of the sixth inning. Brock lifetime against the A's. Three games, five innings, six runs, eight hits. The 381 opponent batting average by A's batters. Danny Valencia will take the pitch for a strike. Valencia. In his debut, is 0 for 2. He has grounded out and struck out. Valencia with some power put in there against Chen, the left hander. Now a righty, and the pitch will be out of the strike zone, but he went after. And a two strike count on Danny. Brad Brock with shift on in the infield behind him. Valencia 262 lifetime hitter major leagues down to first oh my goodness at the fair ball Parra coming to get it Valencia is on his way to second throw by Parra not in time and another leadoff double well this is amazing I mean there have been five doubles hit now three of them actually make it four of them to the opposite field three ground ball doubles a fly ball double by Kana and you just again you think you make a good pitch even better. I mean just slice it go the other way. He does Cut down your swing with two strikes Danny Valencia does all of those things three leadoff doubles in the ball game. They did not score in the second inning They did get a run in the third inning Now they've got another one here And the pitch outside for a ball Begley has drawn a walk and scored and he has struck out Oakland catcher on our second Nobody out. Another chance. Boy, Oakland's had the opportunities in this ball game to have a lot more runs than the three they have put up there, even though they have only five hits in the game. The four walks that Chen surrendered opened some doors they did not go through. That one is going to be down low. Joseph going out to get it. Let's see what they do with it here. One for eight today with runners in scoring position. So with that in mind, Begley still should shoot one to right, or at least attempt to. Get that run over yeah. runner. Over. Tried to right there and fouled it back. And if you do it, I everybody knows call it situational hitting, smart hitting. Make the guy behind you not have to get a base hit and he'll may play in. That'll open up holes. Fly ball will score a run of any depth. Good baseball, good solid, sound, fundamental baseball. Just a 209 hitter against right handers this year. And that one will be fouled away. He started because of his numbers against the lefties and uh, because it is a day game here. Now trying to get a base hit and an RBI against a right hander, Brad Brock. Tough ball game here in this third of three. Orioles, winners of eight of their last uh, 11. Oakland's won three of their last four. Pitch on the way, and he got him to chase. Not even close. Rod gets a strikeout. Yeah, it looked like his intention was to hit the ball to the right side, and then you get to two strikes. You're make, trying to make contact. Good velocity, 95. Young hitter, anxious. Gets him away, but a fastball well located. So Canna will give it a try double and a run scored in the fourth inning and he has struck out he's had a one for five in this series against the Orioles. Brad Brock working with the runner at second base. Valencia pretty good lead Orioles not moving in on him. He gets a little too far off for Brock's pleasure and he steps off. Well, you have to make sure the same distance between second and third, but you're already in scoring position. So if you are going to steal a base, you need to be able to make it. But you give them a running lead. I can't imagine 
Watts is going to try to steal third here, though. Big cut foul back. Got one he had a chance to hit right there. Oh, one count. So Chen, three runs, four hits, five innings, non decision. Graveman, five and two thirds innings, three runs, six hits, non decision. Game turned over to the bullpen. And watch. Runner off second. Uh, the timeout was granted. That pitch. Thought you saw it, but you didn't. Pretty good change up. Yeah. Or a strike. <laughs> Cannot ask for the timeout. It stepped out of the banner's box. Brock's delivery to him. Another, another big one. cut. Yeah. yeah, I mean, just a, a, a tad late. That might be what everybody talking out here. You talked about the extended slump. Did get the game winner on uh, on Sunday, and yeah, that broke a two for 32. Extra inning, tenth inning win, walk off. 20 home runs playing last year, Triple A for Miami at New Orleans. Always a tough gig. Triple A at New Orleans. 0 2 count. And down to third and foul. Came back in on him that time and just rolled over the top of it for the foul ball. Yeah, Brad Brock, uh, the, the change up, the, the longer he's had an Oriole uniform on, the better it's become. It's one of the, I mean, he can throw hard and he's got a breaking ball, but that change up. A lot of strikeouts. Bottom drops out when he throws it right. Runner at second base. It's just way outside. Brock worked against the Tigers back on the first two innings. Couple of hits, two strikeouts, no runs against him in his last appearance. So he's well rested. He's much show Walter. Managing that bullpen, obviously, with Dave Wallace. And Tom Cheedy down there, Dominic. Dominic Cheedy. Pitch on the way, and again, foul back. Though he's finding a way to keep the at bat alive, kind of fighting off pitches. There's Dom. Cheedy, second year with the Orioles. Bullpen coach, but as Dave Wallace likes to say, really the assistant pitching coach. Cold pitching coach. Delivery to Cano by Brock, and he wins the battle. Yeah, there's the changeup. So eventually, young hitter got his fastballs to hit. It's a big league, good velocity, good movement from Brock, and then there's the power changeup. It's like a split finger fastball because it goes straight down when he, and then when you get the two strikes, you can start it in the zone. You can go from strike to ball. That's what you try to do. It's that's supposedly your execution, and it was done perfectly. So Ike Davis will stand in. Lefty's hitting only 184 off Brock. Right-handers 247. A double, and he's grounded out. Three hits in the series. Runner at second base, potential go ahead on the leadoff double. But he has not been moved around. Danny Valencia. Delivery to Davis. That'll be in the outside corner for a strike. Good location. One ball, one strike from Brad Brock. Orioles with the day off coming up, so they pretty much free reign on the bullpen they have available to use. 1 1 delivery on the way, and that'll be popped up. A lot of room, foul territory. Manny Machado. And he's got it. So no runs, one hit, no errors. The leadoff double is left at second base. Good job by Brock. Game time.
by one. And then uh, right here, Billy Burns, fabulous defensive play. Adam Jones for three to one. A's at the time. Graveman certainly liked it, but here come the Orioles. J.J. Hardy drives in the third run to tie it up 3-3. Three, three. That's Chris Davis. All started by a par bunt base hit. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit Geico.com for a free rate book. Orioles are 3-5-0, and 3-6-0, oh, uh, and oh, while the A's are 3-5-0. and oh. Ball game tied up. Nolan Reimold, one of the RBIs, came in the third inning on a base hit. Rodriguez, who's on in relief, grounds at the third, playing in close Valencia. That's a foul ball. So Chris Tillman is not ready to pitch on Friday. And Buck Showalter said before the game he would not disrupt the rotation and push people back. So it'll be Gosman going against the left hander, Andrew Henley on. Uh, Friday Headley and uh, Baldo Jimenez and Garrett Richards will have the start on Saturday. And then Sunday is open. And that one inside. Yeah that's the uh, luxury Tyler Wilson could come in on Monday. They could uh, bring in T.J. McFarland. They needed him last night to score those innings. Then because of the off day you could just kind of get your regular turn if. Chris Tillman was ready to pitch. That ball put up in the air to center. Burns going back again at the wall, fighting the sun. He's got room this time. Yeah, he's playing right over there. I mean, he only had to go about 20 steps to his his left. Rymold out of there. On Wednesday, August 19, all fans that evening, 705 Mets game. We're going to get the Manny Machado, Jonathan Scope, Handshake Orioles t shirt. This is the great signature of these two players when they greet one another, especially after home runs. You can add it to your Birdland wardrobe. Get tickets, Orioles.com or 888 848 Bird. Caleb Joseph, field his choice, and he is grounded out. If Tillman is ready, he could go on uh, Sunday. And Weaver, if he's ready, could go against him. There are a couple of question mark starters, one for each team going into the series. Yeah, Tillman with the ankle problem, and Weaver come, would be coming off the DL. That ball lifted down the line. That's a fair ball going into the corner. Caleb Joseph on his way to second base. Canna will get it into the cutoff man, and Joseph's on with a double with one away. Yeah, finally got a curveball up, and boy, you go back and look at last night's game. What did uh, Sogard hit off of um, Miguel Gonzalez? So again, just a curveball. It becomes hittable because of the velocity, especially when you're throwing 94. And then, boy, down puts it down on the corner. A, a day of doubles here in Oakland. Manny Machado upgraded to some applause, some boos. It's the Josh Donaldson thing, even though Donaldson isn't here anymore. Manny and Donaldson had a little run in at third base and chatted away <laughs> and a little more and the fans here in Oakland still remember that and even though Donaldson's not playing here anymore they still greet Manny with a round of scattered booze when he comes to the plate. He is over three in the ball game. Manny's had a two for 11 in the series again a chance for the Orioles to take the lead. Kayla Joseph at second base. To step off and he wants to talk to his catcher. What are the signs? What do we want to do? Could be game time here in the seventh. Drew Pomerantz looks like maybe getting loose down there. And the Oakland A's bullpen. Pretty good secondary lead for Joseph out there at second base. Manny Machado waiting on a ground ball. Back to second goes Joseph. Simeon makes the play, and there are two down. Well, as promised earlier in the game, we selected the Data Strong fan photo of the game. Tweet your strongest fan photo to Woe's Couch Camp, and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T Mobile. Group shot. And with that, Pomerantz is going to come into the ballgame. 
So Rodriguez will leave responsible for Caleb Joseph who is on at second base deep into the ball game. We're in the seventh inning so each manager now will go for matchups. The Orioles may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Orioles. So there is Drew Pomerantz, the 26 year old left hander out of uh, Tennessee, and a fastball slider pitcher, and 6'5, you know, former number one draft choice uh, by the Cleveland Indians, and actually was traded to get a ball to Jimenez. Uh, he went to the Rockies and then eventually. Here at Oakland last year, 20 games, 10 of them out of the bullpen. How's he been pitching? A little bit of a struggle. Six runs over his last eight outings. Pyre is the only Oriole who has faced him and hit him. Three for eight with a home run. So Pomerantz against Pyre has got a base hit, a run scored, one for three. And the pitch strike on the inside corner. A couple of hits in uh, actually three hits now and 11 at bats in the series. For Parra. Orioles have Joseph on at second base a double. There are two down. Ball game tied at three in the seventh. Rodriguez, his responsibility for the runner at second base. And that one is going to miss. One ball, one strike count. Caleb, three hits in the series. Could be. We'll go ahead run. Parra can get him in. Orioles out hitting the A's now, seven to five. Empire will take that one. It's in there for a strike at 92. Match up lefty on lefty. Lomarantz has become a specialist in that regard, getting the lefties out. Not so much for the right. One and two. Joseph, big secondary lead. Pitch on the way and foul back. Yeah, 92, 93. He started early in the year for the A's, and then uh, shoulder strain, so DL, and then eventually coming back. And the runner in scoring position numbers for today is doing a better job so far. So far, a lot of chances for the A's. Brummerant's ready. The delivery on the way over the top, and a swing and a miss. So Pomerantz will pick up the strikeout. No runs ahead of base runner left on. Ball game tied. Seventh inning strikes from Oak.
payroll from keeping those stars. Mm. Yeah. And he fervently believed it was the best recipe for ending the Tigers 30 year World Series drought. That generosity made him a hero in some hearts, but it didn't buy him a free pass. They're still trying to figure out. Mitch Album said something happened, someone got tired, someone got mad, someone got frustrated, someone said enough. Often in sports, you only get the version they want you to hear, and for now, that's what we got. Mitch Album said a release. A promotion and a day nobody expected in the first week of August. Something happened. Loyalty pays off. Not winning at all does not. That much you can say for sure. Anything else right now is a guess. And that's with the departure of Dave Dombrowski. Yep. And of course, what did they write in the Boston Globe today? Hire him. Dan, Dan Shaughnessy goes, perfect guy for the Red Sox. And Toronto's going, wait a minute. Bring him here. Well, I think you can say whatever you want about Alex Anthopoulos. They made some. Well, real. they don't have to replace him. No, no. Though. Yeah. He could go up there and take Paul Beeston's yeah, place. Exactly. Paul's yeah. going to go anyway. Yeah. Paul's retiring. Yeah, Move him in, and if things don't work with Anthropolis, make him both president and GM. That'll be interesting. He won't be out of a job for long, that's for sure. Pitch on the way, and that ball is lifted into left field for a base hit. Boy, what a ball game. Marcus Semyon has had. He's had a double single walk score to run and driven in two and he's got a leadoff single in the seventh inning. Young man getting a job done. Tickets are now on sale for the Orioles Hall of Fame luncheon Friday August 14 at the warehouse. Luncheon honoring Melvin Mora, Gary Renicky, John Lowenstein, Fred Alvin Sr. They'll be honored that night on the field as well. Tickets for the luncheon at 410-247-2703 or get info at Orioles.com. Brad Brock came on in the last inning, gave up a double, leadoff double, and got the next three outs. Manny Machado in, Burns, the speedster at the plate, throw over to get Simeon back. Yeah, so you get uh, speed, and I tell you, it's, it, it, unless you go down and meet Marcus Simeon and, and, and look at his number, he's a young guy. I mean, he is, like I said, only 24. He brings a lot to your ball club, especially when he gets a little bit better defensively. Burns biting will file it off trying to drag it. Well Ron Washington felt that. The defense had gotten to be such a problem for Simeon that he was taking the defense to the plate. Now usually it's the other way around. But the, Ron thought maybe the reason he was having such a struggle at the plate was he was thinking about all those errors he was committing. Now he's getting that straightened out. And the offense is coming around. Yeah, and he's a local kid so obviously he comes home wants to do well. Burns waiting does not show bunt on that one takes the pitch inside. Tight ball game bottom of the seventh inning. Tied up at 3 3. Orioles got a run in the third inning to go ahead fourth inning. Third inning rather one run picked up by Oakland then in the fourth they got the lead 3 to 1 the Orioles came back to tie it up in the sixth. Still playing the bunt. Brock holding him tight. And again uh, the. The A's have been able to do what you don't want them to do, which is get the leadoff guy on uh, five out of seven innings. Doubles, singles, and now you can play small ball. You got the guy at the plate to do it. Brock really working on Simeon over there at first base. Meanwhile, Burns waits at the plate, uh, looking down to third to Gallego to see whether the bunt is still on. Manny Machado, three steps in at third. Yeah, he's in on the grass and got the, the, the right field hole. Not bunting, fouls it back. As you mentioned, came in at what, 344 in this ballpark? Billy Burns, his style of hitting is, you know, he's a slasher. Hit the ground ball, pound it somewhere, and with his speed, take advantage of it. He got the, really the, the big hit last night. Hit a split fingered fastball that stayed up after the Sogard double for the first run. Orioles really in left and center, foul back. This is about as shallow as I've ever seen Adam Jones play in Reimold in left field, as shallow as I've seen an Oriole left fielder play. Well, you have to trust that Brad Brock, and you can see Wayne Kirby orchestrating the outfield. Brad Brock has to stay out of the middle of the plate. Because otherwise he may get a ball to drive, and then that defense is not going to work. One ball, two strike count on Burns. Runner off first. Pitch just missed, framed by Joseph. Does not get the call on it. It'll even the count up at two and two. 
Down to crunch time in this one. Each team had their way with it with the, the first two ball games. Orioles offense putting away the 9 2 win. The Oakland pitching putting away the 5 0 win. And now 3 3. Delivery runner stays inside out. Foul back. What one run game 14 and 17 and then the A's after starting out the year 1 and 13 11 and 25. Burns has drawn only 16 walks striking out 50 times. So he's more than willing to go after a pitch that's close. Seventh pitch of the bat will be coming after Joseph and Brad Brock decide what it's going to be. Well, you can throw him the changeup, which is the strikeout pitch, but this you want to do it on you know, this count because you want to throw it, strike the ball. If you go to three and two in a tie ball game, then all of a sudden you have to throw it so it ends up over the plate, and that's not where you want to be. Runner again off first base, and he gets him. Great pitch down and away, and Brock's got his third strikeout. Yeah, it didn't go with the uh, the the, the changeup split, it just threw him a fastball. Buzzed it right by him. You could see the short swing, but it's almost like he was playing pepper, but couldn't cover that outside corner. Strikeouts of the Oriole pitchers have been just what the game has called for. Way and Chen who had a lot of people on second inning leadoff double, struck out the last two, third inning leadoff double, got a strikeout to end that inning. Sixth inning leadoff double, couple of strikeouts by Brock. Now he's done it again, leadoff single and a strikeout. Well, here's Reddick. Josh Reddick with that bad back that's been bothering him has kept him out as a starter for the last two days when they'd hoped to have him in. We'll pinch hit for full. Yeah, their hottest hitter and their most, other than uh, Stephen Vold who catches, uh, their their most powerful hitter. So Reddick with a runner at first base and one out. Rock's delivery to him will be down low for a ball. Reels fortunate that Reddick has not been able to get back into the lineup. It's, it's Jim says that's a very big bat. The lineup needs all the offense it can get. Reddick will take the pitch outside for a ball. Well, I watched him last week. If you throw fastball away, hit it to left field. If you speed up the bat with a breaking ball, he pull it. He goes, yeah, it can be frustrating to play in this park as big as it is. Shift on in the infield against him. Reddick will take that and that misses. Reddick's 307, 306 lifetime against the Orioles. Seven lifetime home runs. Well, we first saw him come up with the Red Sox, and boy, for a young player, he had a real quick back. Great. And what a gold glove. Not with the Red Sox, but with the A's. And he knew he was going to be a pretty good player if he could stay healthy. Reddick gets a pitch from Brock that's in there. Three ball, one strike count with Laurie waiting on deck. So Brock right now in the middle of the lineup. Oriole bullpen is ready if needed. Pitch on the way, and that will be fouled off. So with all the injuries the A's have had pile up this season that obviously have affected their record, nothing gets better. Coco Chris comes back. And the neck continues to bother him. He said, I'm going to be injured forever. I will play in pain. There will be on and off days. That's what he's got in front of him. Three ball, two strike count. See if the runner goes here. Simeon does. Reddick takes it and he's on with a walk. With uh, one out. And that will be it for Brad Brock. So both managers deeply involved now in this ball game with the bullpens. Darren O'Day was ready, warmed up, ready to go. He'll come on. The Orioles have runners on. Uh, Oakland, rather, has runners on at first and second, and only one out.
major league relievers. So again, fastballs, he can sink it, he can ride it. Breaking balls, he can add a little bit, take a little bit off. Really, the changeup, something he worked on in spring training. The low ERA, lefties hit him a little bit better than righties. And again, a lot of strikeouts. Low, low opponent's average, and then the four home runs. So runners on a first and second tie game, bottom of the seventh inning. Reddick well, is the pinch hitter to get the walk. Simeon had a single. He's on at second. Laurie coming up, 0 for 2 against O'Day. And one down. Infield, a double play down for him. Swing and a miss and a pitch away. Yeah, a little frisbee breaking ball, and he swings through it. Laurie with the. Uh, one of the big hits last night. Took an 0-2 pitch, tripled over the head of Adam Jones in center field for their second run. Laurie's 0 for 2 in the ball game, RBI in a sack fly. He's had one hit in the series, one for eight. O'Day, the delivery to him up high. Here in this ballpark for Darren O'Day, this will be the 16th appearance. 18 innings, four runs, 16 hits. A's of it 232 over the years against O'Day here in the big ballpark. Butler waiting on deck. O'Day with a 1 1 delivery. Laurie pops it up, foul territory. Manny Machado over and no play. Well, you made a comment earlier this is a great place for fly ball pitchers. And contrary to what you may think, Darren O'Day is a, a fly ball pitcher. A lot of room to get out. Balls put up in the air. And today it's not that it's backfired, but again, but they've hit four doubles, three of them right over the bags. They've used the whole field. One and two the count. Today looking back to hold the runner. Laurie will just get enough of that off the end of the bat. So Laurie keeps his at bat alive as he frequently does, going after pitches outside the strike zone, waiting to get one that he can drive somewhere and trying to give the lead back to the A's in this ball game. Tight one here in the seventh. Now feel pretty much straight away. Reinhold will play as deep. As he does against anybody here in this event. Ooh, uh, do you know how to lean in? Yeah, well, that's what he, he you do, and boy, he'll get right up, and the adrenaline really coursing through that body as if he needs it. He's going to, to, to protect, and that ball is a little chin music. He has it inside, of course. Now he set him up for the pitch away. Let's see. Well, maybe down in the way, or maybe in. <laughs> 2 2 delivery on the way, and it was outside foul territory. Long run, and uh, no play on the way back into the series. So, fighting off the pitches by Darren O'Day. Yeah, and the count at 2 and 2, you still have a pitch where you can pretty much pitch on your terms. So, you that's what it's so hard about when you're a reliever. First batter, you've thrown what? Four pitches, five pitches. Good ones. They have command of all their stuff, even though they don't throw a lot of them, whatever it might be. Runners on first to second base, and he gets him on the pitch away. So up and in, up and away, and then down and away. And there are two down. That'll be the ninth A to be struck out by Oriole pitchers in the ball game. So now the runners remain on at first and second base. Bob Melfin making a decision on what he wants to do here. Votes on the bench. Their starting catcher with a day off today. A lineup that was set to go against Wei and Chen, the left-handed starter. So Butler will come out. A double, a walk, and a ground ball out for him. Yeah, Bob Melvin saying that Stephen needed a a day off. So this is kind of he can be their DH. Still be in the lineup in case Fegley would get, have any kind of injury. He'd lose the DH if he had to catch. So, so vote on against O'Day. There are two down. 
Pinch hitting opportunity for him. Boy, they've had some big at bats in yeah. a tight game. Well, broken 0 for 28 on Monday night with a couple of hits, like 0 for 4 yesterday, but again steered his rookie pitcher through seven shutout innings. Two for two against Darren O'Day is vote. Lead off single Simeon's on at second base one out walk. Josh Reddick he's on at first. Hmm. Not so good. As a career pinch hitter. O'Day looking for the third out and will start it with a strike on the outside corner. Yeah, the, uh, the, the well, it's kind of a metaphor for life, but the good baseball players, pitchers, hitters, defenders, whatever, they, they try to be in the, the now. So I'm not sure he's aware of but he says I don't do a pretty good job of pinch hitting, but I don't know if it's 097. All he has to do is get a hit here and disappoint a lot of Oriole fans and he'll say, boy, I'm one for one. Wayne Kirby moving Jones over towards left field as the day's gonna pitch him away. Did not go around on that. And a one ball, one strike count. I think Kirby's having to adjust with Para on virtually every pitch as Para playing in right field, getting used to the alignments. And on every pitch looking in, Adam Jones signaling out there to Rymel to move him over towards the middle. Two steps towards Adam for the left fielder Rymel. Today's got him. Got back. He had him moving a little bit. Surprised him with a turnaround pickoff attempt. Simeon back to the bag. Yeah, that's one of those inside moves where you just bring the leg up and then pivot. And hope that he gets a big lead. Maybe get a pickoff. Innings over. Don't have to face Bolt. One and one. And a chopper. That's going to be foul. And maybe fortunately for the Orioles, that stays fair. It's a tough play, even with both not being very fast. Yeah, the last thing you're defending with the potential go ahead run and two outs is the little scribber, the infield hit. So Day gets ahead of him with a ball and two strikes. Brad Brock had ending in a third, three strikeouts, a walk, a hit. Both coming. Here in this inning with the walk. Base hit Simeon. A couple of hits actually off Brad. And another one that's going to be squib foul the other way. And vote as he was taught by his mother, cleans up his own mess by going down and picking up the ball. Yeah, I was talking to Ray Fossey, you know, former catcher who does TV and radio for him. He said Stephen Vaught was very much like uh, Caleb Joseph, where he wanted to quit, things weren't going well. My wife said, no, "I don't want to grudge you, old man. Go back and play baseball." <laughs> He's playing in the big leagues. Runners off first to second base, and the pitch toy will be popped up. Joseph Manny Machado, and right in the middle. They yeah, just can't get there. That's Such a long way. Yeah, you know, Sean putting the glasses down on the run over. Balls uh, again. There's some wind blowing towards the dugout, and Manny wants to try to get there without going into the dugout. And you're not going to get any help over there. In a normal ballpark, that's what probably 20, 20 rows deep. That's how big foul territory is here. Manny back out. Vote keeps it alive. Ball and two strikes. Real pitchers, Brock and O'Day really having to work here in this seventh inning. One two delivery on the way, but we'll take it. Two and two. Magic number has been four runs for both of these ball clubs. If they can get the four, they've got a pretty good chance of winning. This will be the seventh pitch of this at bat. Vote pinch hitting. Delivery by O'Day and he ripped it foul. What about it? Yeah, Darren's just going, okay. Uh, I tried to throw on the slider. I got it off the plate. He hooked it foul. 
A moment of reflection. Where can I go to try to get him to either swing through it? Two-two delivery on the way. Boat takes and he's gone. Arguing with himself about that one as O'Day gets another big strikeout. No runs, one hit, no errors. Two are left on base. Our Honda do ups. Jones, Davis, Brady's in a tie game. Continue on Friday. The Orioles hoping to go in there two and one. Mass and two will have the ball game 9:30. It'll be O's extra and 10 o'clock for the game. That'll be on Friday. Day off tomorrow. All the access you need right here on Mass. Yeah, there are the Angels. So uh, went down to Houston and then got swept. Then they got Grinky and Kershaw. So you can see two and ten record. Trout and Polhos. Trout led off the All Star game with. A home run off of Zach Cranky. Look at the scoreboard. Actually, they got to be pitching around those guys because Cleveland, well, they beat them last night and they're ahead three to one in the ninth down in Anaheim this afternoon. We go to the eighth inning and uh, pitch inside. Did he go? Nope. Adam Jones able to hold up. Adam's had a tough day. He's gone 0 for 3. Simi in the shortstop robbed him of a hit in the fourth inning and then. Burns in the outfield robbed him of what might have been a home run. Jones will take the pitch inside. White Sox completed their comeback against Tampa Bay today. They won it six to five. They were down or were ahead in that ball game five nothing. Tampa Bay came back to tie it, and then the White Sox won it in extra innings. Delivery to Jones and a swing and a miss. Pomerantz just reared back on that one, fired some heat. Yeah, and just got it enough out of the zone that uh, Adam couldn't get to it. Jones will be followed by Davis and Paredes do up. Pomerantz came on to get a strikeout in the seventh inning to end that one. Jones, that's going to go to short. Simeon's there to get it. One away in the eighth inning. You can follow the Orioles wherever you are with MLB.com at bat, number one app for live baseball, up to the moment, at any moment, in game highlights, look ins, radio broadcasts, and more. MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Yeah, Fred, you're, you're right about a tough afternoon. Three out of four balls hit hard and nothing to show for it. Yeah. So with one away in the eighth inning, Davis a single and a run scored. He has struck out and drawn a walk. Big shift put on against him. Pomerantz fastball in for a strike. Yeah, Drew Pomerantz, he's got a good angle to the plate. He's 6'5. Again, the stuff good enough where 92 93 throws the ball downhill. Good tilt on the slider. See where the target is. And Davis will be through that one. So Chris Davis 
Trying to get the Orioles a base runner here in the top of the eighth inning. This one has been uh, about pitching. The Rays an RBI base hit. Hardy's had an RBI single that tied it up earlier in the ball game. Rival picked up an RBI single. So those are the three for the Orioles. Lowry's had an RBI on a sack fly that came early and a big two RBI double by Simeon in the fourth inning. Both starters non decisioned in the game. Pomerantz third pitcher for Oakland and in the dirt. Twenty thousand one hundred seventy six on hand twenty one seven six for the day game traditional day game here in Oakland. Two two pitch to Davis and uh, swing and a miss. Yeah nice pitch stay out of the middle of the plate and he does outside corner ninety three. Oh, the University of Mississippi. We've had Mississippi State and you miss. Look at Mississippi State still in the Oriole dugout managing. <laughs> Here's Jimmy Paredes. Paredes a base hit at an RBI, one for three in the ball game, two for ten in the series. He's had two RBIs in these three games. Pomerantz delivers to him, and that'll be foul back. Brady's uh, against the left handers this year 250 41 points higher against the righties. <laughs> oh one pitch over the top and outside to him. A lot of pitches thrown in this ball game. Most of the ball games going to take place tonight. Boston, New York, tee it up again. Toronto's going to be home again against Minnesota. Minnesota really struggling. And Toronto picking the pace up. Radius will take the off speed delivery up high and away. Yeah, the uh, the norm out here when you're on the West Coast trips, you usually know how a lot of the clubs are doing before you even throw the first pitch, but not these 12:35 games. And the delivery and that one again will be fouled back. Had one to go after and wanted it, yeah. didn't get it. Well, you're looking for the pitch, and that's why hitting so difficult. You get it, ball moves a little bit. You got to center it perfectly, or get a good portion of it, and it just fouls it off. And of course, if you read that swing, he's probably not going to be a fastball, or if it is, it won't be in that area. Came in with a heater. So Pomerantz has three strikeouts still in the inning, retires the side in order. 3 3 ball game to the bottom of the eighth.
break. He had 17. Moss at 25. Casimir, 115 game. Doris, Derek Norris now catching. And then Sean Dean. Doolittle, shoulder problems this year. Actually, he simulated a game yesterday, so he's their closer. So again, you take those all out of the equation, out of the formula. And then Sonny Gray, the Orioles miss him. He'll be pitching, uh, but again, this is one of the better young pitchers in baseball. And then we, we certainly know about Stephen Volk because he's been, we've seen him in three of the three of the games. Well, an Oakland team putting itself back together again. O'Day will stay on to work, and the pitch will be in there for a strike. Valencia, Bagley, the catcher, and then Cano, their left fielder, do up. Valencia's had a double, one for three in the ball game, getting his first chance as an A. Actually got here after the ball game started yesterday. Good pitch, O'Day gets him to chase one yeah. away. Yeah, he was uh, that swing was in the wrong zip code. When he got there closer of choice at the shore, really, because as we mentioned, Doolittle the closer. The last portion of last year, and then a shoulder injury. O'Day's pitch will be taken outside for a ball. Valencia, who's got power. O'Day working to him carefully here. And yeah, they play him shallow into the off field, which is right. Of course, Adam Jones plays everybody. And a little deeper and left. Nolan Rival. And you trust that Darren O'Day with two strikes will make a quality pitch. Valencia will go to short. Hardy's got it. Well, that's what you were talking about. Caught that ball way out in front of him. And uh, one out. Let's take a look at our Major League Notebook on this date in history. The Orioles are going to see Albert Pujols and the Angels coming up back in 05 on this date. He became the first player with 30 home runs to be hit in his first five seasons. And in 1937, last night we talked about a ball game that was played with one baseball. In 37, the Newport Canners and the Johnson City Soldiers could only play six innings. They ran out of baseballs. Uh, they were fouled off and they didn't have enough on hand, and it invoked a riot in the center field bleachers. <laughs> and the pitch is in there for a strike. <laughs> we have to, you know, they, they should have invoked what they do in Japan, at least in the old days, probably not anymore. They throw the balls back. Yes. Yeah. Especially, been, hey, hey, can we have some of those balls? We're going to leave. And we might get a few back <laughs> or whatever. That ball to the middle, and Hardy can't get that one. So Bagley is on with a base hit. First hit of the ball game, one for three for the Oakland catcher. And each team, three runs, seven hits now in the game. Yeah, he just dropped the bat head on. And it slithered his way into center field. So all day will work with the runner on, and Canna coming up. Quickly, left-handed action in the bullpen for the Orioles. Yeah, the Orioles closer. Zach Britton getting ready, but Joe Walter said in the second half, I fully intend to use Zach Britton in for more than just an inning if the need be in order to finish out a ball game. Dave Wallace is going to give Britton a little time as he'll make the walk to the mound. No, they really don't have a whole lot of players available. You get Coco Chris, but the neck problems that kept him from starting. And you got Eric uh, Sogard, left handed hitter. Chris Chris, a switch hitter. And that's pretty much your bet. That is it. Both started on the bench. He's been used. Reddick is playing in right field. And uh, Coco Crisp, who they just as soon not put into this ball game, and it wasn't clear whether he's even available. You know, managers aren't going to give you that before the ball game. So yeah, whether Coco could even play. Yeah, the minute he made that dive and catch, you wondered how he was going to come out of it last night. And uh, it's going to miss inside. Canna with a double scored in the fourth inning. He has struck out twice. Not. A speedy runner at first base. Bagley, a situation where you in another game might think about using a pinch runner with some speed, but that would be Coco Crisp. And that's another problem. You don't want him in the base pass, diving head first into bases. Pitch on the way, and then he got him to chase one, really pulled off on that one. 
Yeah, what Darren O'Day is he moves the ball around the the quadrant of the strike zone about as well as anybody. Yeah, maybe the hardest you're going to see him throw all year is maybe he'll hit 88. A couple of years ago, he was joking. He said, "I almost got the 90." In the old days, Mike Flanagan used to say, "Well, let's see if you go to Canada with the exchange rate." Take advantage of the inflation. <laughs> yeah. Might have changed, but uh, man, he just forces you to cover the plate. And if you think he's going away, he'll throw it in. That same breaking ball that he struck Brett Lowry out, he can throw it off your front hip if you're a right hitting uh, batter. Well, again, up and down and in and out, add, and subtract, and then the deception of the arm the release point. Runner at first, kind of waiting on it, swing and a miss. Out of San Jose, attended uh, Berkeley. Mark Canop getting his chance here. But Shola talking today said, "Check the roster and see how many of these kids are homegrown, meaning out of California or very close, which actually isn't unusual in baseball. There are lots of banners out there in that right field bleacher section where they have the drums, the fans, the flags, the banners, and the noise. They enjoy their game out there." And waiting on a ground ball towards short. Hardy, he'll play it in the glove. There's one. Really, Jonathan Scope not in time. Two down. Canna reaches. He runs pretty well. So right here, there's your throw, and it took a little bit off. Make sure that you get the throw. Usually see a little bit more on it. You never know. Maybe didn't get a, a grab. Whatever. So Ike Davis left hander do up. Buck Showalter will come out and get Darren O'Day with a runner on at first base and two down. Zach Britton is ready to go in the bullpen. Darren O'Day will be responsible for the runner on. Gave up only one hit in his relief appearance. Everybody, not only a very proficient but prolific ground ball pitcher. Lefties are only hit no 98, and then the righties a little bit higher average, and then only two home runs. Not many balls, and those are probably the important number here with a runner at first. None of the inherited runners so far here in 2015 have scored. Mike Davis 0 for 2 against Zach Britton. Runner at first base, two down. Goes after the first pitch. So Davis here in the bottom after the eighth inning trying to get that runner around from first base. But against Zach Britton that will not be. Well easy. he went back and he talked to Darren Bush the, the hitting instructor Marcus Jen Jensen they were over by the railing. I can imagine that's got a report. Get ready. Look down look for a ball that's going to start maybe high high and Zach's on his game. Bottom can drop out. And then once he throws that pitch at 95 to 97, maybe he'll throw you a nice hard slider. Britain is appearing in his eighth game against Oakland. Four of those were as a starter. 
Runner goes. Here's the throw. Caleb Joseph on the money. Oh, mercy. Got him! No question about that one. You can't make a better throw than that. Caleb has thrown out 29% of base dealers this season. And Canna taken out as that throw was right on the money. No runs, one hit, no errors, nobody left on base. We're going to go to the ninth inning in a ball game that is tied at three. Mujica comes on and like his last save was all the way back to last year when he's pitching with the Red Sox. And again, if you go back and look, now he loves a split fingered fastball. It's his best pitch. And uh, a couple of years ago, uh, he was the closer for the Cardinals. And the Cardinals, what do they do every year? They win. And traded to the Red Sox, didn't have that kind of success. JJ Hardy leads it off as we go to the ninth inning. Hardy a base hit and an RBI that tied the ball game up in the sixth. The Orioles got two two out RBIs by Paredes and Hardy to tie the game up that inning, and he's going to lead it off here with a base hit up the middle. So JJ is on with a single, his second hit of the ball game, and his fifth of this series. Yeah, just a high bouncer, but fast infield. Nobody can get there. Pretty much playing JJ straight away. Number six. Orioles have seen Mojica a lot, having worked uh, with the Red Sox. Hardy is now three for six against him. And Jonathan Scope will come to the plate. Scope's one for four off the Oakland right hander. Well, that fractured thumb early on on the DL for about almost uh, three weeks. And again, seven earned runs in his last 11 and two thirds innings. Ground ball toward short. Simeon, one. Two. Yeah, boy, it's so when you're young, it's so easy to overswing. And, you know, again, we always talk about the fact that a lot of times you can advance runners if you shoot the ball the other way. You know, great series. You think you're going to, that's going to keep going on. And then you get a veteran out there that gets you to roll over and you get the double play ball. So two down, top of the ninth inning, nobody on for Nolan Reimold, who has not faced Mojica in the past. And the pitch taken for a strike, Danny Valencia. Just about a step and a half off the line at third base. That late inning strategy that is deplored by many guarding the lines. Pitch on the way, Mojica will get a slow roller foul outside of first this time. Three runs on eight hits for the Orioles, three runs on seven hits for the A's. Each team with a number of scoring opportunities that have passed by the board. In this game, big clutch hit. Semi had got it in the fourth inning, driving in uh, two runs. 
Drive old will take fastball up high. Yeah, even when he humps up, he didn't get much over 91, maybe occasionally 92. So again, the, the splitter. That's his pitch. And that one will yeah. bounce. That's what it was. In this ball game, the A's have gone one for 13. With runners in scoring position, the Orioles three for nine. And pitchers have worked their way through with some important strikeouts for the Oriole pitchers and some big ground ball, including a couple of double plays the other way into the screen. Well, there's your home run pitch right there, and he just fouled it off. And just keep waiting for Nolan to get into one. He's capable of doing it when he's healthy, and he is. Outfield shaded to right. Burns in center. Shading his eyes. Makes the catch. No runs on one hit, no errors. Nobody left on base. Britain's already in the ball game. The closer for the Orioles. Game is tied. Bottom of the ninth coming up. No runs. O'Day an inning in the third. One hit, no runs. The other side, Rodriguez, he worked an inning, a hit and a strikeout. Pomerantz, he won an inning in the third. Had uh, three strikeouts. Bullpens have done well. Togo Chris obviously is able to come into the ball game. He is going to pinch hit for Ike Davis. Trying to get some uh, one, get somebody on, and two, somebody with speed. So Chris will face Zach Britton who did not have to record the out of a batter as he got a little help from his catcher throwing out Canna trying to steal a base in the inning. And Chris will swing through that one for a strike. Bottom of the ninth. Yeah 19 rehab uh, at bats. The elbow surgery uh, early in the year and then the neck problem. Crisp is three for 11 lifetime off Zach Britton. And he'll take the pitch inside for a ball. All the runs, the two starters for the Orioles way in Chen, three runs, four hits over five. Graveman gave up three runs, six hits, five and two thirds. Crisp waiting on it. He'll chop it towards short. Hardy, big hop. One down in the bottom of the ninth. Simeon and then Burns at the top of the order do up. Now with Chris being used in the ball game, that leaves Eric Sogard on the bench. Marcus Simeon, a walk, a double, a single. Big day. Shortstop batting in the nine spot. Had that two RBI base hit in the fourth inning. 
and got caught stealing in the fourth. He's also picked up a single. Leon up, one of the new members of the roster for this team in the bullpen. Zach Britton on that third base side. I'm out past four. Ball got away down in the corner by the bullpen. Scope moves behind second base. And the shift pitches on the inside corner for a strike. And just want to stay away from his uh, power. Good high ball hitter. We saw that. Hey, he was talking about the home run. He said uh, Chad Rowe made a terrific pitch to down and away. He said he was just trying to cover the outside corner and he hung a slider. The next thing you know, it gets out of here. Broken bat, possibly. Found that one off. Well, He's that, had two yeah, home runs, yeah. four RBIs, and four games here. That's this month. He only had a couple of home runs in the previous 68 games. One and two from Britain. Zach's delivery to him, and he chases outside. Tag put on by Caleb to make sure. Two down. Yeah, well, if Zach Britton's not striking you out, it, it's, it's usually on the. Uh, on the ground. Coming into this this appearance, uh, they had put 90 balls in play and only 10 in the air. And that's just a wave of 97, and you know he short arms the ball. In other words, it's not a big arm swing. It's not like you can time it, and then the ball just jumps and dives. And so there are two away in the bottom of the night, top of the order. Billy Burns up. Burns will get a base hit. Jones will hustle over with that great speed. Turn made. He's going to stay at first. That's his first hit of the ball game. Comes with two down here in the ninth. Yeah, just trying to make contact, and then actually it's a line drive and all in the middle of the plate. Very short swing from Billy Burns. Josh Reddick, who came into the ball game as a pinch hitter, drew a walk in the seventh inning. Stayed in the ball game to play in right field, and here he is. You've got great speed, remember, at first base. The one into the corner somewhere would result in a pretty good race. Would just as soon get him. It's something else. Delivery on the way. Reddick will take the pitch, and he's in there for a strike. Reddick three for six, Aubrey. Well, the Angels came back with a dramatic win over Cleveland. Three runs, bottom of the ninth inning, 4 3, won it on a wild pitch. Pedrosian got the win, Allen took the loss. And a chopper into the shift. Jonathan Scope, they got him. Ninth inning, no runs, one hit, no errors, one left on base. Free baseball, sports fans, I say, free baseball for all.
So Arnold Leon out of Mexico comes on up and down four times this year. Obviously a guy with options, so they uh, bring him up. Uh, he has started in the minor leagues. So again, he'll come in in relief here. Certainly capable of doing that. So not a lot of innings at the major league level. ERA a little bit under four runs a game. Lefties obviously at 357 with not a lot of at bats and then only the one home run. Chris will stay in the ball game. Kogo Chris will play in left field. And Canna will move to first base with Ike Davis having come out for a pinch hitter. And Leon will come on and see what he can do here against Caleb Joseph. Joseph, Machado, and Paradu up. Double, grounded out, hit into a fielder's choice. And the first pitch will be foul back. I didn't think it was possible that any ballpark would rival Tampa Bay for thunderous head banging noise, but the three games here have convinced me I think they've done it. And this is open air. And this is open air. It is the loudest headache music, noise, not music, noise I've heard in any ballpark. Well, I don't they have this uh, music now? I think they still have the organ player in, in, in the Dodger Stadium, but also uh -huh. they have more noise. Well, Vinny got up and walked away the other day. Did he really? <laughs> yeah. Pitch on the way. Ben Scully, there was, you know, he does have like a fifth inning. Ben comes on for just, just to talk about the game. He was doing it live. He came on. He started. He stopped. He said, it's so loud here, I can't do this. He was live. He put the microphone down. He walked away. God love him. 88, my hero. Pitch on the way. Joseph does it again. A base hit into left field. Crisp over to get it. Caleb Joseph's two for four in the ball game. Well, Caleb loved. I mean, he's a good low ball hitter, and eventually he gets here in the 10th inning something down and in. I mean, he just drops the bat. Well, again, uh, you know, how do you get Caleb out? Way in or way away, but it, inside, middle, and down, boy, he can get the bat head to the ball, and he does. So the Orioles pick up a leadoff hit here in the 10th inning. That is their ninth of the ball game. Manny Machado 0 for 4. Danny Valencia in on the grass at third, right along the line. And Machado will take the pitch for a strike. Yeah, if he gets up enough, you know, sooner or later he's going to shoot one up the gap. Certainly capable of doing that. Machado sh showed no signs of intending to bunt. He's had two sacrifices this year. Pitch will be taken inside. It's a one ball, one strike count. Manny with power to follow. Caleb Joseph at first base. There's the number two and two. Extra inning ball games, not many. Four and six, the record for Oakland. Very short lead at first for Caleb. And that pitch is going to be up and in. Well, that goes into, again, a lot of times extra inning games, as you mentioned, and the fact that they started out one and 13, one run games. Since played a lot better, but still 11 and 25. A bullpen defense or lack of usually a lot of extra inning and one run ball game. Caleb needs to be careful because if he falls too far, he'll be in foul territory <laughs> and off the back. <laughs> and then again, talk about deep outfielders. I mean, Coco Crisp, <laughs> they are out there. About a ticket. Yeah. Exactly. The walls at 367. <laughs> he's at 350s of them. No, but he's hitting one over <laughs> my head. If it is, it's going to get out of here. Manny Machado fouls that one the other way. A little late on the 91 mile an hour pitch. And yeah, Manny he, and 0 for 4. The guy that played the deepest ever, and he was a real good player, was Roy White. Mm. The old Yankee Stadium was 457 in left center. He and was on the front row. Well, he was actually on the warning track. Yeah, just a step short of it. <laughs> He's about uh, 4.48 away. Pitch on the way is outside. Moving out to get it. Dagley has gone the distance behind the plate for them. Backup yeah. catcher vote is in the ball game as the DH for Oakland. Yeah, one of those breaking balls that didn't even have a chance, didn't start on the plate. No chance of Manny chasing it. The Orioles have not gone to the bench. In the ball game, Flaherty, Lowe, Snyder, and Weeders all still available. We are in the tenth inning of a tie game. 
And this is the rubber match of this three game set. Three ball, two strike count. Joseph is running. And a base hit into right field. Caleb will make the turn and go to third. Reddick will get it in. So running at the appropriate time puts runners at the corners with nobody out. Yeah, you know, it's one of the great running situations. Three and two, you have to throw a strike. You got to take a little bit longer. And then, of course, it works out because you don't hit it at anybody right there. And he almost stumbles. Watch him almost go down. Kind of cut the corner. And, uh, maybe about a step and a half before or stride and a half before the base. Or maybe slipped a little bit. So Manny Machado comes through with his first hit of the ball game, third of the series. Now the Orioles with the corners covered get Para up. He's had a base hit, a run scored, one for four in the ball game. Para a chance to give the Orioles the lead here in the tenth inning. Wow, they're going to walk him. Wow. So Para will be walked, and Adam Jones is the on deck batter. They're going to try and set it up for the double play. Well, Adam's 0 for 4, but he's had three of those really quality at bats. I think maybe Bob Melvin saying, and you know, you have to understand, Bob Melvin had Gerardo uh, Para down in, in Arizona. He knows he's a real good player. And still pretty Range. I'm not sure you ever want to pitch to Adam Jones, but it does set up the force. A lot of pressure on Leon. Adam is grounded into 15 double plays, the most of any Oriole, but he's got all that power. So now they'll meet at the mound. The Orioles here in the tenth load them up with nobody out in a 3-3 ball game, and they'll want the infield drawn in on this. As to how they're going to play it. Yeah, how are you going to pitch him? What you're going to do? Boy, base is loaded. No, no, no extra bases here. I mean, no place to put him. Where's Adam? I mean, the pressure is on Arnold Leone. You don't have to get a base hit, but what you have to do is make sure he throws you a strike. Adam's gone three for six with the bases loaded this year. Picking up one double, part of those three hits. They're loaded here. As the Orioles get the leadoff single by Caleb Joseph. He went the third Machado's base hit, and then they load him up with the intentional pass to Parra. And here's Adam. Jones up the infield will be in. They'll try and turn the double play going home to first. Cut off the potential go-ahead run. Jones robbed twice. Could have had a home run probably in the sixth inning. Burns went back and caught it, reaching up over the wall in center. Robbed by the shortstop back in the fourth inning. And yeah, they, that one back. Yeah, with the infield in, that same ball goes into left center now. So, so Leon's going to try to get to a situation, and of course, you know, you have to throw strikes with the bases loaded, and you want to get to two strikes, and then you start hunting the strikeout. Adam wants to put one in the air. Four games underway, three of them have gone to extra innings today. All the night games in front of baseball. Jones will pop it up. Second base. Infield fly rule. Mm -hmm. Caught anyway. Barely, yeah. Jones is retired on the pop up as Laurie had to go back to get it. Man, he's frustrated talking about Adam through his bat. You know, a little breaking ball, big swing, and they get exactly what they wanted. Colorado at home against Seattle. They're in extra innings, 10th inning. They're tied at 5 5. The Angels have already won their ball game in extra innings, 4 to 3 over Cleveland. And here we are in extra innings. The only game that didn't go extra was the uh, White Sox. Well, that went extra. Sorry, that went extra. And the Angels won it in the bottom of the ninth inning. So three out of four games, extra inning games today. So the opportunity now is for Chris Davis. In at first and third, back, second and short. Davis takes the pitch outside for a ball from Leon. Yeah, and then if you're, of course, if you're Bob Melvin and you're managing the, the A's, you're figuring, okay, you can see uh, those are pretty good numbers right there, 50%. But the one thing Chris Davis, when he's not getting this, does is strike out a lot. Maybe he's playing that card here. Here's the delivery. Davis on the off speed pitch is in there for a strike, fooled him at 75. Scribner, Evan yeah. Scribner up.
Leone up and down, up and down five times. Brian Leone in a big situation in this ball game. Delivery on the way to Chris is outside. Chris Davis, a base hit and a run score that came in the sixth inning. The Orioles got Paredes and Hardy picking up the RBIs. Reimold had an RBI earlier in the ball game. Sunny in there, shortstop's got a two RBI double in the game, and Lowry has a sack fly RBI for the three for Oak. Well, the ball gets free in that bullpen in left field. Coco Crisp makes a friend forever. <laughs> Whoever comes out of that pile with the ball. Sacks full and one out. They move him back at first and third, a couple of steps. Step off again by Leon. 26 year old right hander. Trying to find a way to get out of this. Pitch to Davis and a swing and a miss. Yeah, he got behind him and he dropped the curveball off this time 93 on the corner. So if you're Chris Davis, when he makes it, and this is a perfect pick. So now all of a sudden, he, he, yeah, he's in, in trouble, but you have no idea because of the way he sequenced his way through these first four pitches what's coming. 2 2. The Owens delivery, Davis takes it outside. So we go the distance on this at bat. Three and two with the bases loaded and one out. Leon out of Mexico pitched in the Mexican League and then uh, made his way up into the minor league system. Getting a shot here with Oakland this year, working out of the bullpen up and down. Three balls, two strike delivery. Davis puts it up in the air. Deep shot, left center field. And goodbye, Oberon! A great Salami Chris Davis on a 3 2 pitch brings them all home, and the Orioles go on top 7 to 3 in the 10th. Well, he had to make them put the ball in play. I'm not sure he had that on his mind. They, they were talking about the home run he hit on Monday night. Deep right center field, not only the pitch, but how far it went. Ball pretty much Baltimore high. Right across the letters. Boy, did he nail it. Our oh, Lexus of Towson drive of the ball game right. is this. We'll take a look. 3 2. Jimmy. Got to throw a strike Ready. down the middle. Boy, moonshot. And with one swing, the Orioles get four runs. Grand slam off Leon. And our Lexus of Towson drive of the game brought to you by the area's number one volume Lexus dealer five years running. See why at Lexus of Towson dot com. Twenty eighth home run. Yeah, he's been talking about it. He said sometimes you overswing. Boy, that looked like he was just playing pepper. Because it ended up going about 400 feet to left center field. And uh, Chris Davis is now the RBI leader in the American League. He just passed Josh Donaldson by one. With a grand slam home run. He's the RBI leader and he is seventh in the league in home runs. And for our Maryland Lottery contestant, Jason Berlin, that's worth 500 for you. Ground ball down to first. Play to the pitcher covering Leon. That will do it, but the Orioles are up. That's how they score runs. You see in the 29 home runs in road games is first in the American League. The Orioles have lived and died by the long ball the last few years. And boy, this one looks like a winner. So the move walking par, the intentional pass, worked in getting Adam Jones on the pop up, but batter after that with the bases loaded. Well, the Orioles made him pay. As you know, Gary, team game. Got to pick each other up. The pop up with the bases loaded by Adam. So the Orioles will have a 7 to 3 lead, it looks like, going to the bottom half of the inning. Seven runs on 11 hits. Credit those who got on. Joseph with a base hit. Manny Machado got a base hit. Par the intentional pass. 
set the stage for the grand slam by Chris Davis. And the fastball is in there for a strike. So Leon records the out. That will do it in the inning, but what an inning for the Orioles. Here in the tenth, they get four, and they get it on this swing of the bat by Chris Davis. The Orioles with a chance to win. They need three outs. They lead it seven to three. And perhaps it looks like the game winner, Britain, can wrap it up. Oh, right. you know, Zach comes in, has a scoreless inning. Otherwise, you don't get to this point. Yeah. Uh, it's just you know, it's such a. If they end, the Orioles have winning, you could go back and look at uh, you know, I mean, and Chin didn't have his best stuff, but got some key outs, and then the bullpen came in, and then you had Caleb Joseph start the inning, and you had the punt early on by par. I mean, there's so many different things to help you win. And, at the end of the day, this was a game that very easily, if you don't make the pitches, what were they, one for 13 or 14 with runners in scoring position? You don't even get to this point. And not done yet. You got to get three more outs here. Laurie up, RBI, sack fly, 0 for 3 in the ball game. Zach Britton will miss down low. So there's what we were talking about. The RBI leader in the American League is now the Orioles, Chris Davis. Donaldson to Shara, Kendry Morales, the top four. Worked his way up in a hurry. Pitch will be taken for a strike. For Chris now against the Oakland A's, he's got 12 home runs and 40 RBIs in 55 games. And he's got nine home runs and 30 RBIs in 30 games in this ballpark. And a strike taken. So Zach Britton finds the corner. Laurie has the count evened up on him, two and two, middle of the order. Vote. Then Valencia do up here in the bottom half of the 10th inning. Britain after his second win of the year. He's 1 and 0. Swing and a miss, and there's one of the outs that he needed. Yeah, real good pitch. Close enough to uh, get Lowry to think it's going to be a strike. Sinker starts somewhere around the knees and then dive bombs out of the zone. For this season, the most innings pitched by Zach Britton, an inning and two thirds. Uh, he came on in the eighth inning. And while he did not retire a batter faced, he gets credit for an out on a caught stealing that occurred while he was on the mound. So he's trying to work two and a third to pick up the win in this ballgame. But came on as a pinch hitter in the seventh inning. He was called out on strikes. Britain's delivery to him will be a ground ball into the shift. That's J.J. Hardy. You know. Yeah, the other thing about Zach Britton, uh, you know, he was what, 37 out of 41 in save opportunities last year, but the 
Over the last two years, the pitch efficiency, 13.8 pitches per inning. So if anybody was ever going to be able to pitch more than one inning as a, as a closer or a late inning pitcher, it would be this guy because of the low amount of pitches. So two down, nobody on. That'll bring up Valencia. Valencia's had uh, a double in the ball game. came in the eighth inning. A's will look back on this with their one for 13 with runners in scoring position. The Oriole pitchers will look back on it too as having gotten some big outs. Rock an inning and a third, O'Day an inning and a third. Britain probably going to work two and a third, and no runs scored against the Oriole bullpen as of yet. Valencia will go to first base. Davis makes the play, and this ball game and series is over. And a great one for the Orioles. So a one, two, three inning. Britain gets the win. He is 2 and 0. Oh. Leon will take the loss. He is 0 oh and 1. Well, a lot of baseball lessons. You know, you figure a chance 4 and 0. Oh, he'll go out there. You got a young pitcher on the mound who's been struggling. Of course, as it turns out, Wayne Chen, he battles him. I mean, it's one thing about Wayne. He's very tenacious. So he gets himself into trouble, able to get out, even though he gave up the three runs. And then the bullpen, terrific. And then the clutch hitting. Again, uh, look at Parra. He dropped, he started the two run rally to tie the game with a bunt base hit. And then, of course, the grand slam by Chris Davis. So the final line on it the Orioles 7 11 and 0. They left 5. Oakland 3 8.